What? I have. I literally have. Yeah, I just. I have. It's just the mic here. It's like a one person umbrella, unfortunately. Not even getting yourself. Uh, no, we have to go to one class. Make it to the third period. Or fourth oh, yeah, period. That's right. You kind of want to. That's what something. I asked her if she had time yet. What a finish. Uh, I don't even know when I'm going to go to Toronto. I think it's at like 10 o'clock. So I just came here to watch the guys game. I'm not going to watch. Watch their final game ever? Hey. Okay, can you hear us well? Okay, perfect. So I don't need to adjust anything? Awesome. We keep quiet now. So yeah, Gemma, stop saying all the cuss words. He said talk a bit louder. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. So this camera, this camera will just... Mr. Worldboard didn't give me the game sheets. Do you want me to go get them? Yeah, if you don't mind. Just, just like this? Thanks, Jeff. Actually, let me fix I'll call yeah, Abby. Just use the camera, right? You just use this for your side attack? It's locked in. You want to guess, right? Move side to side. And then this. Zoom in. Zoom on. And if you need to, you can adjust it a little bit. Go down. Right. Okay, I'll go get that. That's okay. Mr. Wilderborn. The other sheets. Yeah. Did you sign me out of class? Yeah, Jumbo's coming down. Okay, Jumbo's coming to you. I didn't mean on this. I gotta take really glare. I'll just take. I'll just have their one. I can see if we can get, I can see if we can get, like, some of this. Yeah. 
Yeah, it'll probably be a minute, but that's fine. I kind of expect that I wouldn't have to write a message. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Saucer Single A Soccer Championships. This morning we have a matchup featuring the Guido de Breck Christian High School Griffins and the St. John de Verbeuf Lynx. We will get underway shortly with both teams still in their huddles. Oh, five minutes. We are five minutes to kick off. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Grips are taking the field and the Lynx just closing things up, ready to cheer and take the field out. Wow. Both teams looking to start strong in this Sasa Championship. A reminder just of the format here, we do have a double berth in effect for officer qualification which means that if either team loses this game, it is not necessarily the end of their season. If, hypothetically, the team that wins in this round goes on to win the Sasa Championship, then the team that loses here in this first round will have the opportunity to play the loser of the finals for a qualification spot at OFSA as well. But both teams would rather not find themselves in that situation, depending on another team's success for qualification. So both teams will look to qualify for the Sasa Finals starting right here, right now. And momentarily, we will have a game sheet, so we will be able to call the players by their last names. But as for now, we only have knowledge of the Guido players. And we are underway here at Guido de Brett Christian Highs. Lynx play a deep ball to begin. Strouding with a header there. Vanderwood controls the ball, plays it up the side. Strouding slips a little bit, but gets it back to Vanderwood. They're playing the ball up the right side of the field here. Vanderwood controlling well. Guido in control of possession early in this match as Vanderwood plays the ball into center field for Boss, who does not come to the ball. Strouding plays that one very deep. Parsifal running through it. He's in a good spot here, and he heads the ball on as the Lynx take possession of the ball in their third. Ball's played out to the side for a throw for the grips. Throwing this pass along. Harshport puts it into Harshport. Vanderwood controls the ball in the midfield. Played up the side, and that one's out. Could not be controlled along the sideline. Ball's put it deep. Temple goes, takes it. Ball. Great read by Temple there. Ball as he plays deep. Boss can't control the ball, but Hart sports onto it. He's going to take a shot. That one's no good. 
Looked like it was wide. A great block by the left there. Number 15. Gittles still looking threatening from this spot as Dorkin can throw the ball at the top of the box. He's pushed off of it. Astadio has the ball here. A pass back. Vanderwood has control. Play deep. But Gittles attacking early. Something that they've been trying to emphasize since the beginning of the season. Great example. The Lynx looking like to create something of their own here. Stratting falls over. Aka has the ball on the wing. Aka entering the box, crosses the ball. Ball's up top. Shot is way wide. That one actually finds its way over the fence. It'll be a goal kick for the Griffs once we get a second ball in play. Vanderwood always takes the goal kick for the Griffin side. Griffs looking in control early. As the ball has been mainly in the length of third of the field. But we'll see if the Griffs can convert early. Stratting with the ball on the side, plays it up to De Silva. De Silva in the middle. It's turned over the length of the ball. That's the deal. Plays it deep. Nobody there. Keeper is going to take the ball. Temple sends it up. Not sure that's quite where he wanted it to go. It's Lynx take control once again. Lynx are in the middle. A little bit congested. They're going to play it back in the a little bit. DJ Boss in pursuit. Silva takes the ball, but he plays it right back to Lynx. Lynx are looking. Plays a through ball. Does not get through. Bork plays that ball. Vanderwood pushes it up. Parcel board in pursuit. But the Lynx defense to take that ball. Push it out to the side. They'll look to reset for their offense. Bork with some fancy footwork there. But he can't get it through to Parcel board. Strip still in control here. The Lynx on the defense. But Silva pulls the ball. Gets it picked off. Strong defense played by Fortier there. And he's in on that. He shoots, stopped by the keeper. Beautiful stop by Ben Temple. Way to close out on that. Good shot. A split second soon. Had a little bit of a better chance. Silva tries to chase that one down, but it's out the sideline. Melange throwing the ball in here, looking to set something up for this link side. Throwing his foot immediately out by Bork. The Griffins have had a chance to reset their defense here. Melange throws it in deep. Stratting. Ball's crossed in. Arsenal controls it. Sent to Boss. Boss loses it immediately. Ball's played in top. The shot on goal. Easy stop for Ben Temple. Temple with a few stops early here. It seems like Ito has had all the chances. But all the shots on net have been for the Lynx. Once again, Arsenal controlling the ball. Just outside the box, but the ball is thrown away again. Gito is often in just outside the box, the 18 yard line there. Oh, and this could be, this could prove a promising chance that it's called offside. And Aka is not happy about that call from the referee. But the official is sure in his call. And Vanderwood is going to start things off here for the Griffins. Arsenal can't control it. Up the back line for a goal kick for the Lynx. Griffins have struggled to control anything within the box so far. But the chances are there. The buildup has been tremendous. Up 
Oh, it's actually a corner kick here. Wait. Not sure how that quite happened. Maybe I missed something. But it's going to be a corner kick, and the Silva is going to play this ball in. Let's see if the Griffins can capitalize on this awesome chance. Both of their strikers dead by the net. The Silva, beautiful cross. Corner was well played. Vanderwood has the ball and it's cleared. Walker looks to control the ball. He, he's able to do so. Initially fumbles it a little bit, but is able to get through a couple defenders, and that ball is going to be out of play. De Silva looking to throw the ball in here. Ball thrown in. Nobody controls it. Ball falls to the ground. Vander with a beautiful play, also Vanderwood. Links have control of it. On the defensive right now. Played out the side. Links are scrambling here. Edo's looking comfortable keeping things. The Links is in. The possession battle. Almost certainly in Edo's favor, apparently. But all it takes is one counterattack from the Links. As they play it deep in. The speed of Akka. They played it in behind the Guido defense a couple times, and Aka is able to chase it down. And all it takes is one of those opportunities, a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Aka might be able to find the back of the net. But the Silva here he can't keep control. And it's going to be a foul called on the Silva. Fairly minimal contact. Kicks play deep, and it's controlled by the way. That's a deal here with the ball. Plays it up to Aka. Aka on the sideline. Aka playing by Stratting. Crosses it in. Easy play for the keeper. Aka's speed has proved very dangerous here. As he's created numerous chances just by speed alone. Carson Ward here looking to make something out of that drop kick from Ben Temple. But no can do as Link's defense is just passing circles around him. Ball is clear. Walker controls that by the Walker looking to play a through ball here for De Silva. De Silva chasing it down. De Silva can't secure the ball. Belanger plays it well. And it will be Link's ball on the sideline. Belanger can look to throw the ball in here. Apologies if I can't really see the game when it is actually there. We are on the roof. Asadil playing deep in here. And Gino's defense is totally adjusted for Aka. But they are able to recover. They're going to play it in deep to Aka. Aka running behind the Gino defense. Temple secures that one. And the uh, robust keeper reminding his strikers to stay on side. That's not waste those chances. Good vocal keeper. That's what you look for in a goalkeeper. Good leadership. Able to communicate with the players. Still with the ball on the sideline, plays it out of bounds, can't play control. Belange is going to throw the ball in here. Easily controlled throw in the Silva, can't quite get to it. Asadillo with the ball in the middle. Weaving through the Guido defense. Taken out by Vandal with no whistle there. But the Lynx get the ball back. Boss handles the ball. Plays it back. Morris plays a through ball up there to Vanderwood. See if Vanderwood can control it. There's two lanes players. That's too much. Ball is cleared up the sideline. We'll be a throw in for the Griffin. Throw in to Arsenal. Arsenal plays it up. You know, loses control once again in the offensive moment. They have a very strong possession, possession in the midfield. Looking to play it up for Aka. Aka. Aka has a one-on-one. -on -one. He's pushed off the ball. A beautiful stop by Ben Temple. But with the amount of chance that Aka is getting, it seems like it's only a matter of time before he can put one back. Stratting falls on the ball there. He's able to control it after he gets up. The Silva can't control the pass of Stratting. Ball is cleared out the sideline by Belanger. 
Encouragement there from the bookkeeper. Ball is placed back to Stratton off the throw, and the ball is controlled by the Lynx. Moore takes the ball, plays it through the ball, but that one does not find its target. Ball is played up, the Lynx playing up the sideline here, looking to create another chance up in the. And that ball is stopped by Bork, but it's still controlled by the Lynx. De Silva takes the ball on the sideline, plays it off the Lynx, throws it into Boss, who can't quite. Get the touch on that one and passes it directly to the Lynx. And the Lynx are going. And Akka is sprinting after that ball, but Stratting is there. Little effort play there for Stratting to just control that ball. And the Griffs will be throwing it in as we will have some substitution. Looks like we'll have Lucas Wildemar checking in for Noah Hartsport. Couple other subs as well. Looks like Ryan Loft will take the field. Looks like John Lansing will also take the field. Sorry for some confusion. Looks like she. Foul call on the Griffins there. They will have a free kick opportunity here. Closer to the midfield than the 18 yard line. Pretty close to right in between. They're going to play it into the box. Yeah, against the Griffin team that is so, so tall and so athletic, it's hard to get any opportunities in the box with your head. Boss runs away from the ball on that one. But Wildeboer will play the ball into Lansing. Lansing has the ball back to Wildeboer. Wildeboer chasing that ball down. He has some fresh legs. But he still isn't able to get there in time. Maybe still warming up a little bit. Well, the board drops the ball off to our sport. Our sport throwing to the lock. Lock can't play control. Links possession. Trying to play it to the other side of the field, but no luck there as the Silva tries to block it. Plays it back to Silva. On the right side of the field, seems relatively wide open, but there is still a defender there. The Links left back is ready. A little bit of frustration on the Lynx defensive line here. A little bit of a miscommunication as that one goes up the sideline. Belanger calling for some intensity from this Lynx side. Boss plays it into the box. The Silva calls for a foul there as he puts two hands on number 18 for the Lynx. Mitch Morden hits the ground and draws the foul. Belanger wants to play a deep. He's ready. Puts a lot behind that one. That one's way deep. Over both the heads of our sport and number 16 from the way. Vanderwood has the ball. Very, very see Vanderwood make that mistake from the defense line. Tremendous snap back. Lance has the ball in the way. Play through. Vanderwood has the ball. He's pushed off. It seems the whistles are going the links way early. See if that's a trend or the Lynx will begin to play a little bit more physical. The fouls will even out. Vanderwood has the ball. Hartsport. Out of midfield. Two defenders on it. He goes to the side. Loses them both. Ball is played up. Will the board can't. Picks up the sideline. We're going to have some subs here for the Lynx as well. For the Guido side, it looks like Silva will check out and Wildeboer, Noah Wildeboer, will check on. We have a Wildeboer duo here for the Guido Griffins, the brothers Lucas and Noah. Lucas, the striker, Noah will play more in the midfield. Links in the midfield. Acidillo plays it deep. Aka. Aka's on the ball. It's a one on one with the keeper. Oh, and he skies it. That ball might have made its way all the way to Smithville. An unlucky break for Aka, who quite frankly has had his best chance of the game there. Maybe we can ask Heritage to pick up that ball while they're on their way. That was quite the shot attempt. Maybe got a little bit too eager and excited on that.
Vanderwood taking the goal kick. A beautiful kick to Lansing. Oh, Lansing slips though. Able to control it anyway. Hard support. Plays it up the wing again. Lynx control that one very easily. The Lynx looking to create something of another chance because, quite frankly, they keep getting chances like that. It's only a matter of time before the scoreboard is no longer 0 0. And for those of you just joining us, the score is 0 0. We are about 25 minutes underway here. Boss plays the ball up the wing. And I don't know who that one was to, but it certainly wasn't to Wildeboer, as that one hits the bricks on the side of the building. And it's just, it's, the convergence struggle has been real so far for the Pedo Griffin. They've managed to get it anywhere but the box, as Aka sprinting up the sideline on oh, the speed of Aka. Blocker's trying to catch up, but he just can't. He, he's able to just push him off the ball, which is exactly what the goal was. As Acidillo has the ball, though, it's turned over to the links. Acidillo here. Jack Randlewood able to secure the ball there. He plays it up the sideline to Lansing. That was a beautiful play. The Lansing's unable to chase it down in the midst of two Lynx defenders. The Lynx defense has been really strong. Vito's offense has not really been able to find any cracks in the armor, so to speak. As so far, it seems like the Griffins have had one or two chances in the box maximum. But they've been in Lynx half of the midfield for almost the entirety of the game. The Lynx chances are very short and sweet, and then it comes right back. That one's played deep again. Aka, he's going. And they want an offside and they get it. Aka is livid. And that, that seems to be their game plan. Where Aka trying not to be offside, but the Gito defense playing quite high. Aka just runs behind the defense and law ball quickly. There's going to be a couple subs here. As it appears, Jack Connect and Noah Hartsport are going to come on eventually for the Gito Griffin side. But not quite yet. Vanderwood takes the free kick. He sends it deep. Keto cannot control it. On you! On you! Acidillo had the ball. Acidillo to Acidillo. Aka. Vanderwood trying to take Aka. He has a bit of it. Oh, and he's taken down. And it appears that one will be right outside the box. A reckless play from Vanderwood. One more step, and that could have been a penalty. And the Lynx will have a tremendous opportunity here. And Vanderwood, lucky he didn't get a booking on that one. Took Aka from behind. And Ian Astadio will be taking the free kick here as the Griffins create a very tall wall. That's a difficulty that the Lynx are going to be running into for the remainder of this game. Any play in the box will be very difficult when you're trying to play it in the air as the Griffins just have a very, very tall and physical lineup. It's a shot. Keeper! Ben Temple's a diving save. It was a tremendous shot by Astadio. But Temple gets there and manages to stop that one. And Ben Temple keeping this Griffins team in the game chance after chance. Temple gets his hands to the ball. Tremendous play from the keep. Ball's crossed in. Oh, and he can't get his head to it, but a tremendous effort there from the Lynx. Two terrifying chances. The Lynx still have the ball here. They play it in. Aka! Offside is the call, but Temple's on the ball anyway. The Lynx with chance after chance, and Temple with save after save so far, and that's been the story of this half. The goal kick goes directly to the Lynx, but they can't control it. We are about 20 minutes in here, this first half. No shortage of action, as both teams have had some chances. The Lynx controlling the shots on net battle. But possession seems to be in the hands of the Griffins, who just can't convert as soon as they get to the 18-yard line. And 
Guido defense does play very high. And that may be an attempt to catch Aka offside, who has been offside twice. And Aka is the main target of those through balls from the length. Length's playing up the sideline. Belanger with the ball here. Plays it into the middle to Aka. Aka looking to turn. Blocker clears it right to the keeper. The Lynx looking more and more in control as they settle in here. The home field advantage slowly fading for the Griffins, who came out fierce, but the Lynx have able, been able to recover. Vanderwood plays the ball to Wilderborn. Wilderborn to a different Vanderwood, Jack Vanderwood. Vanderwood plays the ball in the middle, falls deflected, turned over. Astadio plays the ball up. Number 17 has the ball. Loses the ball, Toby. Lansing with the ball, goes up the sideline. Lansing, he's running. You know, what a run from Lansing. Lansing gets the ball back on the sideline. He's looking to cross the ball in, deflected for a corner. The Griffiths will have another corner opportunity here. We're not able to convert on the last one. This time, Loft will take the corner. De Silva took the last one. He's no longer on the field. The Griffins really want to convert on this opportunity. The Lynx have had so many chances. Law plays it in the middle. Vanderwood looking to get ahead to it. He does, and he sends it the complete opposite direction. Can't control it. Lynx will have a goal kick. Once again, we just, so far the Griffiths' inability to get shots on target has been their biggest downfall. Their defense in their midfield seems so strong. The buildup has been leading to nothing as the chances have slowly fallen away. Link's keeper. Uh, Ball's played back in. And it was a decent cross. There was just nobody there, and it's not supporting third, just a little Letting him know he'll be there for the next one. And that's what the Griffin needs to do more out here. Keep the links out of there, and it's what they did early so well. Borg throws that ball. That ball is lost a little bit, but the Griffins, uh, they let it go out, so the links will get a goal kick. Link school kick up the sideline. Uh, that one did not reach its intended target. As Kinect will have the ball in his hands here for a throw in. And I can't remember the last time the Lynx crossed the midline. It's been in their half for the last few minutes. The Lynx surely looking to get back to the form they were in 10 minutes ago. Throw-ins deep into the box. Borg plays it backwards. Sylvain plays it deep. And they're able to clear it. There's a man on, but the Griffins control that one quite easily. No threat there. But the Lynx striker is just preying on a mistake. It looks like that one bounces off his hand, but the Lynx complaints they're not recognized by the referee Lansing chasing it down can't quite get to the sideline Vanderwood encouraging his players to clean it up and get some intensity going for them here Law plays the ball into the middle Wildeborg chasing it down he tracks it down and is able to control the ball plays it backwards Walker with the ball Walker looking to play it up the right sideline and he does Wildeborg chasing the ball down Links left back on the ball, plays it out the sideline. Smart play there by Belanger. He's able to reset the defense, and the substitutions are going to come in. Oh, 
throw in more commands. Ball's kicked overhead. And the Lynx are excited at this opportunity. The ball's played deep and it bounces off his heel as he's running. That's a play you don't see very often. That would have been a perfect through ball, but it was almost so precise, it hit his heel. And they want offside, and it's called offside. Aka, third offside of the match, third wasted chance. But you almost wonder if the trade off is worth it. With the amount of chances he's had on net, Aka himself has had more shots on goal than the entire Griffin side. Maybe the offsides are worth it. Lystra is a new substitution for the Griffins. Vanderwood plays the ball deep to Harsabor. Beautiful kick. Harsabor cannot control it. Number nine on the links. Hot pursuit of that ball. Reed Vanderwood fairly easily controls it. Number nine being Eric Lapointe for the Lynx. Lynx have the ball. Vanderwood, though, controls it. Vanderwood passes the ball. Wildeborn in control. Plays it up. De Silva can't get to that one. Aka. And the ball. That's a little bit too much height. Not enough speed on it. Aka can't do much. Astadio. Shot on goal. Astadio. And that one rolls right into Ben Temple's arms. One of the easiest shots he's seen all day, quite frankly. Temple plays it deep, wants it out of his half. Ball is controlled by the Lynx once again. Lystra with the ball. Lystra's got some fresh legs and he has some tremendous pace. Lystra chasing it down. Well, the board. Well, the board to the Silva. Silva plays back to Harsavor. Harsavor with the ball, plays it to Blocker on the sideline. Blocker barely keeps it in bounds. And the Lynx control it anyway, and he kicks it straight up. It confused just about everybody, but it seemed to let the Lynx take possession of the ball. Wildeboer steals it back. Turnover of a number seven on the Lynx. Wildeboer can't hold on to it. He's trying to jockey around that ball, but he can't. Bork takes the ball. Lystra to Bork up the sideline. The ball goes out of bounds off of Lystra. Once... Once again, it seems like the Griffins cannot get themselves any chances within the 18-yard box. Whereas Aka, on the other hand, is getting tons of chances even within the 6-yard box. Blocker keeps it in bounds, barely. Blocker up the sideline to Lystra. To Silva, back to Blocker. Blocker can't get to it. Ball's out of bounds. Belange throwing. Throws it. Oh, and he was going to throw it right to Aka. I saw the eye contact between the two. Aka, probably the most prolific player in this game so far, as he's had so many shots on goal. Enzo Aka. Tremendous play so far. And he's putting a ton of stress on the Guido defense. Belange heads it on. Wildeboer heads it back. Ball's played back to Belanger. Belanger looking to create a chance. Plays it way deep. Vanderwood gets his head to it. That's the 6-4 body and 28-inch vertical of Vanderwood against that ball. Carson Vanderwood now had it. Jack Connect, top pursuit. Trying to stay with him. Trying to force the turnover here. Griffin's just trying to create one chance at least in the box for their guy. Acidio. Tice Acidio, that is, number seven. Gonna be a throw in for Belanger here. The Lynx are putting the pressure on it. It's 9.26 and our kickoff was at 9. For those of you just joining us, we are 26 minutes into the first half and the score is 0 0. As they're gonna call a handball there on the Lynx just outside of the Griffin's box. Free kick. Vanderwood plays it deep, very quick. Art support running after that one. Maybe all the muscle weighed him down. He couldn't get to it. Oh, Art support! Art support has it! The goal! Noah Art support! And a miscommunication from the Lynx proves lethal as the Griffins take a 1-0 lead off of some footwork from Noah Hartsport. Oh, and some anger from the Lynx. And the goalie, he just believed that the center back had it. The ball bounces in and out of the keeper's hands. And Hartsport, as a striker, should expecting a mistake from the Lynx defense, puts him in the perfect position 
to gently roll the ball into the back of the net. And Noir's for adds another goal to his season totals. And it's now a 1-0 lead. And that is tremendous for the Griffins who have struggled to have an opportunity within the box. They truly needed that goal. The Griffins energized, looking for a second here. Boss plays it into the middle. The ball's headed up. Keeper takes it. They were looking for two goals in rapid succession there. But no luck. The Lynx looking for an equalizer. And the Lynx stopped playing, even though no whistle was made there. They expected a foul called on them, and nothing was. Lansing controls it. Astadio with the ball. Plays it up. The Lynx looking frantic here. This game is far from over, but the Lynx would love to find the back of the net now. Bring things back to equal. Ball's played back for Vanderwood. Vanderwood plays across the middle. Ars award in the middle. Aka on him. Oh, and it goes right under his foot. That was very close to being a problem for the Griffin. Boss pursuing that ball. Runs the wrong way. Can't get to it. Links with the ball in their own end. De Silva takes that ball back. De Silva with the ball. De Silva. Oh, and he slide tackled. Cannot stay on the ball. And it looks like Aka's not offside. The other player was. Oh, but an off. Wow. Questionable call from the lines in there. Play is put deep. Vanderwood plays it right to the Lynx defense. Rare mistake there from Vanderwood. Put through the legs of Lystra, but the still was able to recover it. Now it's put through the legs of the Lynx defense. Lystra tries to supply through ball there to Boss, but it's not through. Acidio weaves through the Guido defense and gets to the ball, plays it low. Vanderwood able to keep that ball from finding Aka's feet. Keeping the ball off of Aka's lace, it's been a key here for the Griffins during this little run. Connect plays the ball into the middle, loses it. Acidio in the middle. This could prove threatening here. Vanderwood with a tremendous defensive play to end that chance. De Silva plays it deep and he's taken out in the process. Heart support. Heart support on the ball. Heart support plays it past the keeper. Plays it into the middle. Heart support wants a penalty. I don't know about that one, but Heart support still lipping off to the ref. That one almost seemed like a similar situation to the first goal. Guido not really getting clean shots one on one against the keeper. More running past the keeper, finding shot on an open net. But hey, if that's the way they're getting goals, why switch it up? Belanger looking to play to Aka. Plays it just right to the keeper. Oh, it's a bit short. And Vanderwood, Temple wanted that ball, but Vanderwood clears it out to the side. It looks like the Lynx will still have another chance here yet. Apologies, I'm standing right beside the mic, so if it's gotten a bit loud, I'll sit down. Did you put the ball on? Okay. Beauty. Belanger throws it in. Controlled by Acidio. Put in deep. Keeper. Ben Temple, putting on a master class from the net. Ben Temple is keeping the Griffins in this game. They have had, the Lynx have had rather, at over five chances, couldn't count it on one hand, where they've been in and behind the defense. And Temple has just made some tremendous diving saves. Thinking back to that one free kick as Astadio controls the ball in the middle and it's turned over to Lansing. That one free kick that the Lynx had right outside the box off a foul from Vanderwood. Um, and they're going to call a foul there as well on Harsimor. And Harsimor is not having his way with the refs today. <laughs> Thinking back to that one free kick where Temple diving saved. Ball that would have surely caught the top corner. Lynx controlling the ball. They have not had a good shot on that in a while now. But they're still going for deep chances. The ball is just rolling to Temple. 
Oh, as he waits a little bit to grab the ball there, pulls in the Lynx offense, burns a little bit of time in the process. De Silva with the ball. They're pushing hard here. De Silva plays the ball into Boss. Boss with the ball. Boss, pass the defense, and he loses it. Seems like as soon as he crosses that 18 yard line, everything falls apart. Blocker with the ball. Tice has to deal, can't control it, but the other defenders do. The midfield. Oh, and he can't get to that ball before Vanderwood does, but if he did, and that one deflects off Vanderwood's hand, unintentional and in the line of the body, so there's going to be no whistle there. Connect. Slide tackle. Got it. The Lynx player at slide tackle could not stay on his feet afterwards. Fork. Fancy footwork. Doesn't work. And the links here trying to play the ball up looking for one more chance Vanderwood with a beautiful clear <laughs> see if the keeper keeper can't catch it that's a hard ball to catch there's a lot of a lot of power on that one Vanderwood a little bit upset that nobody chased that one down with the expectation that it would go through the keeper's hands and Aka leaves his side where the ball would have gone Belanger throwing the ball in. And we've seen significantly more subs from the Guido side. It's a little bit of a different strategy. Strategy is fresh legs. Whereas the Lynx, as Silva almost takes out a spectator, um, as the Lynx tried to have one unit, 11 players. Belanger looking to throw the ball. He always throws it into the box from there, but we'll see. The Lynx seem to be a fan of high risk, high reward plays, especially on these counter offense, counter attacks, rather. Ball's played in. Aka! Aka with the head to it, but it cannot find its way to the net. From our angle, it looked good, but Temple's able to walk to the ball. Aka frustrated. Temple wipes out on the goal kick, or on the drop kick, rather. But Griffs are able to secure it anyway. Sort of an awkward play there. Field not always in prime condition. Something the Griffins would expect to be used to. Boss chops the ball away. Ball is kicked out the sideline off of Lansing. Four. Able to force that ball out off of Lynx player number 12, Nicholas Robert. All played into the middle by Hartsport, but it's picked off. They're looking to play deep. Vanderwood is able to control it. Vanderwood just go weaving through the Lynx defense is Vanderwood. He's able to set up a chance for Lystra. Small slide tackle on the sideline. Great play by Belange. There's been a staple of this Lynx defense up until this point. And it's going to be a throw in. Boss misses the ball with his head. And the halftime whistle goes. As the teams go to talk things over, just one nothing for the Griffins. 40 more minutes to secure their spot in the Sasa Championship. We'll be right back with some second half action. I mean, at least he okay. yeah. At least he kept it up. That was good. So I, I'm thinking, is it healthy? That's why I figured it. 
60 şahit geldim görmüyorum. Both teams take the field here. The Griffs looking energized. Lynx looking for an equalizer. We return here to start the single-A championship action. This is the first round between the St. John's of Brebeuf Lynx and the Guido de Brett Christian High School Griffins. 
score. one nothing for the Griffins after Noah Hartsaborg got a chance in and behind the keeper. And from the Lynx, we have seen a story that's been repeating itself, the theme throughout this game. Playing the ball in deep to Aka, Enzo Aka. He's had a few good chances, couldn't convert. The other main storyline in this game would be Ben Temple. <laughs> Tremendous keeper. He's had multiple stops. As Robert Blocker shows us his abs. Uh, a bit of a strange scenario. But Ben Temple saving this game. Clean sheet. Really indicative of his performance so far. Tremendous save on that free kick. And for those of you just joining us, there's a free kick right outside the 18-yard line. Put beautifully to the top corner and Ben Temple with the diving save. Boss kicks it off to Vanderwood. They're looking to create a chance right off the kickoff. Vanderwood plays it deep. The Silva chasing it down. No can do. But Lansing! Oh, and he's knocked off the ball. It looks like the ball is played off Lansing's foot. But a corner kick is called for. And it looks like the Griffins are playing way up on this corner. Trying to find the back of the net one more time. A little bit of a nail in the coffin. Trying to put away this Lynx team early. De Silva had a tremendous kick last time he was up on the corner. Plays it in. Beautiful kick, headed out. Links looking to clear, control the ball in their box. Play it up the sideline, can't control it. Stratic plays it into the middle to Vanderwood. Vanderwood with the ball in the middle to Bork. Bork. Bork tries to chase it down, but no can do. Ball is played backwards. Unfortunately, I cannot see the numbers for a lot of these late players. Ball is played up. Boss. Boss. Not called offside. Boss shoots, misses the net. Oh, and it was beautifully played in. But Boss cannot find even the goalposts on that one. That was a tremendous opportunity for the Griffiths to take a 2 0 lead. But Boss could not convert. He's having a bit of a rough game for himself. He looks to turn it around, he has a full half to do it. As Boss controls the ball here, plays it back to the handle. Beautiful play by Boss. Redeemed himself a little bit, even though he missed the goal score off the head. The ball is controlled by two. Dropped it. Played up. Aka. Aka in pursuit. Stratting looking to play it away from Aka. Aka's on his side, though. Aka takes the ball. He's in the box. He's looking to cross it. He lets it go out. Corner is called for. Interesting strategy from Aka. Oh, the corner. It's more important than that. Two on two. He knows his team. He knows what they're looking for. They will take this corner opportunity. If that's a deal. Ten. The link. Look, taking this corner here. Creating an opportunity. Ian has to deal. Ball's played into the middle. Then we're going to get a chance. It's very difficult to get a chance for the cross against this Nito Griffin team, as we've mentioned. Numerous times throughout this broadcast. Ball is played up. Hard sport. Hot pursuit. Ball is kept in beautifully. Bork easily controls the ball in the midfield. Bork plays it up the midfield. Jack Vanderwood right at the center line. Played up the other sideline to Silva. Controls that ball. Lansing and Boss are up at the front. Ball is turned over. Put out of bounds by Boss. Lansing. Lansing chasing it down. No can do. He's going to send it deep, and he could not send it deep. He was pointing up, trying to tell his guys, get deep. Heart support. He's gone. Jonah Heart support. Oh, and it's kicked off. He's trying to cross the ball. And it's deflected by number five on the links. That's Jackson Relis. Great defensive play there by Jackson. Able to keep the ball out of his box. And it looks like he's going to clear it here. Relis. Blocker has the ball in the midfield. Played to Bork. Bork looking to create a chance here. Hard support does not go after that ball as Lansing calls him off. Hard support looking a little bit tired after that last run. Up the wing here. Crossed in for Aka. 
Stratton and gets to that one before Aka can. Arcevort kicks it up the sideline. It looks like it's deflected, and it is. Arcevort will throw the ball in here. Griffin's looking to get it out of their end. Been an interesting matchup so far. Really coming and going in waves, who seems to be in control. But the Griffins have been the team to find the back of the net. Lancic chased that ball down. That's a beautiful play. Oh, and it bounces funny. It was a great play by Morris, but it finds a divot in the field. Bounces out the sideline. Ben Temple truly keeping this team in this game here. As only one goal is on the scoreboard. Bork in the middle. Plays it up the side. It's stock. He was looking for De Silva on that one. Number four for the Lynx. Played out the sideline by Philippe Nanillo. Ball's played in the middle. Would have been an opportunity for the refs as it goes through the ref's legs. And they're chasing it down. Vanderwood. Vanderwood playing physical. Knocked him off the ball. Vanderwood angry, but he did put his elbow into the back of number 16. And it looks like the Lynx will get another kick. Castadillo will take it. Last time Castadillo in this spot put a very dangerous shot on goal. And it looks like Castadillo is able to move the ball a little bit further up than it truly was. The foul was committed below the 18-yard line, still outside the box, but it was below the line. He gets himself a little bit more of a desirable angle with where he pulled the ball back. And we'll see if he takes another crack at the net. I don't think he will. He plays it in. Oh, and it's... Oh! A tremendous chance. The Lynx get ahead to it, but not good enough contact to put anything on net. And Aka doing the splits to try to get to that ball. Did not get his laces for the leather. Vanderwood taking the goal kick here. Trying to stall a little bit. Taking his time as the subs come in. Wildeborn connect will come in. No, Wildeborn Jackson connect. Vanderwood kicking off here. The Lynx looking for more chances like the last. Able to draw a foul right outside the box. De Silva looks to control that, misses it. Harsabor, Noah Harsabor takes the ball. He's going to play it up to Noah Wildeboer. Plays it a bit behind him, makes it a bit difficult, but Noah Wildeboer able to control it. Wildeboer plays it in. Jack Vanderwood with the ball. Jack Vanderwood up the sideline. Size difference between those two players is something to behold. But Jack Vanderwood has him in the corner. Jack Vanderwood plays it into the box, but there is nobody there. <laughs> the ball is called out, but very late. All the players were standing around the ball before any whistle went. Goal kick for the Lynx. Goal kick is deep. Put to connect. Oh, and he misses the ball. Number four for the Lynx. Leap the Neo. Misses the ball and then puts it up the sideline. The Lynx falling a little bit out of form as we get into late game here. Become a little bit more frantic. Looking for a last minute goal, last minute equalizer. We have just gotten underway in this half, still a ways to go. The Griff's looking for one more goal as it is 1 nothing. Aka, Stratting takes the ball away before Aka can turn that into a chance. Stratting has a crack at it, kicks it right off Belanger. Ball is played deep. Stratting is no longer back, but Blocker takes a spot. Or Loft, rather, sorry. That is Ryan Loft who plays that ball outside, resets it. But the Guido defense gives him time to get back. A little bit difficult because all the Guido players look relatively the same. All tall blonde hair. Difficult to differentiate from up on the roof where we are. The Lynx are going to have an opportunity here. They have struggled to have an answer for Ben Temple, though, so far. 
Ben Temple has gotten his hands to every single shot by the Lynx. And that seems to be getting into the Lynx's head a little bit. Trying to, they're trying to mix up how they shoot. And this ball is outside the box, and it's, it's hard to tell if that's a shot attempt. Jack Connect able to control that ball tremendously. And the team frantically screaming out as they want to connect to clear it. And they're still not clearing the ball despite Temple's pleas. But Temple gets his hands to that ball, catches it. Vander would tell him to slow down, but Temple eager to get that ball out. As he was calling for that. Fordyke. Fordyke after the ball. Fordyke loses it. Fordyke playing physically on it. Vanderwood gets to it, decides to play it backwards, turns around again, plays it in the blocker, blocker, up, taken away, ball's played deep, Akko with it, Enzo Akko with it, number 16 with streaking down the middle, there's a cross opportunity, the Lynx are looking dangerous here, a team with nothing to lose is a dangerous team indeed, and the Lynx here, down one nothing, truly have nothing to lose, and everything to gain by finding the back of the net with one. Ball's crossed in. Bork easily controls. Hartsevork controls the ball. Gives away his one-on-one -on -one opportunity and lets all four links defenders get back, up, get back on him. Cameron Bork. Cameron Bork looking for an opportunity here to create a chance. Ball's played in. Stop. Number nine, Lucas Wildebor. A pure striker. He's taken out outside the box. This is a great spot for the Griffins to be in here. Right outside the box, straight in line with the net. This is difficult for the Lynx to defend because there's so many things the Griffins can do with the ball here. And Bork and Vanderwood lining up here. Both Jack and Reed Vanderwood standing in close proximity to each other. As they strategize as what to do with this opportunity. All right, Cameron Bork and Jack Vanderwood lined up. It looks like Bork will take the kick. And it's faked beautifully. Bork with the shot. Oh, and Cameron Bork! Finds the back of the net. Chills from that tremendous shot. Cameron Bork with an absolute cracker. Finds the back netting. And we knew from the start that was a dangerous spot for the Lynx to be in with Bork. Lining up to take that free kick, and the Van Jack Vanderwood gets the wall up and scrambled on his fake. Even though he's right-footed, fakes with his left. Still enough, and a beautiful shot from Cameron Bork. It is now 2-0 for the Griffins, and the Lynx slowly fading away as the Griff put them away with that beautiful free kick. That could prove to be the nail in the coffin here. But Noah Hartsworth looking to add another. Hartsworth down the field. It's in the box. Hartsworth, can he get a shot up? Oh, and it's a third goal! Brody Hordyke! Oh, and it's called. It's called back offside. Oh, and it would have been a third goal. Certainly the nail in the coffin. But it's called back. Offside. No goal for Hordyke. Our two goals so far are by Cameron Bork and Noah Harsabort. Bork's coming off a free kick from quite a ways out just now. The Griffins seem to have renewed energy here, being up 2-0. No, no let up here from this Griffin squad. The Lynx play it in. This could be a chance, but Ashen turns on the Jets. It looks like somebody's birthday on the sideline. You can hear that. It's gonna be a corner kick. The Lynx need a goal scoring opportunity here. They have not been able to find the back net and it is two nothing. And Akka has been successfully neutralized by this Griffin's defense. Hartsworth has a one-on-one. -on -one. Hartsworth's got size and speed in this matchup. He plays it past the defender. Hartsworth shoots with his left. And he makes terrible contact there. 
and is, is unable to find any open netting, unfortunately. He plays it right to the keeper. But he's already found the back of the net once in this matchup. The Lynx are looking a little bit demoralized here. Fordyke keeps the ball in a tremendous effort play. And the Lynx just kind of jogging about here. Looks like all the fight has been pumped out of him by that last Griffin goal off the free kick. And that was such a huge goal from Cameron Tork. And it's controlled by the Lynx. They're in a good spot, but they play it right to Robert Walker. Walker plays it out the sideline. Vanderwood preaching control as they are up 2 nothing in this game and they do not want to give up an easy chance. It's truly a defensive focus here for the Griffins. They've managed to find the back of the net two times here. Only way for the Lynx to get back in this game is if they find the net two times, which should be very easily preventable given the amount of time remaining in this first round matchup. I believe we're about halfway through the second half of action. The Lynx have about 20 minutes to score two times. They have not been able to find Akka. That that has been something that has been very different in these two these two separate halves, rather. It's truly been a game of two halves, even though the Griffs found the back of the net once in each. The Lynx have had zero chances that have been noteworthy in this half. And the Griffins have been constantly barraging the keeper as the whistle is blown there. Foul. It's the, no further distance than Cameron Bork scored from last time. A little bit of a difficult angle. And I'm sure they'll just play it in to the box and look for an opportunity to use their size and strength to get ahead to the ball and find the back of the net. A truly tremendous play from Ben Temple to keep this Griffins team in the first half a team that can get demoralized quickly. Temple kept their spirits up with some saves. And Leicester tries to get ahead to it and just misses. Looks like Jude Jans will see the field for the first time this match as well. <laughs> that goal kick is out the side. Oh, it's saved. Nope, it's outside. Jackson Connect plays it up. It's for Bonds. Boss just stops pursuing the ball and loses it. Jackson connects. Let's throw the ball in. He goes back to DJ Boss. DJ Boss, ball's in the corner. He's looking to cross it. Knocked off the ball, loses it. It's going to be Link's ball. Another chance squandered by the Griffins. Link throwing. Vanderwood's on it. The pressure that the Griffs are putting on is preventing any chance from the Lynx. Boss tips it forward. Loses the ball, put up the time by the Lynx. Griffin throwing. Kind of a ping pong match here. No team really able to keep control. But the Griffins are okay with that as long as it's not touched their end of the field. And it so far has. Jack Vanderwood tries to play it into the box. Off the heel of number 15. It's an offside call. DJ Boss unhappy about that one. It's the right call there by the line side. Connect cannot control the ball. It looks like he stepped in a divot there. The Lynx desperately looking for a goal. It's played into Akka. Akka. Akka going to have a crack at it, but Stratting plays it out. Akka frustrated. Enzo Akka has not been able to get a shot on goal. But he was not able to capitalize in the first half. But I'm sure he's he would give anything to go back to that first half and take a different shot at the net. Look at Wildeboer stumbles there. That's Dio hits him with the move. 
And the Griffins just crowd the box there and take it up the sideline. They don't need to be fancy at this point in the match. They're up to do nothing. Keeping the ball out of the box is their main focus. Lystra pounding and harassing. Lystra still harassing, but he runs past on that one. Silva controls the ball. He's going to play it up for Joel Lystra to kick. Lystra kick can't quite get there, but it's still clear. Good, good kick by the Silva. The Silva blocks that one. The Silva is all over the place as he plays it up to Lystra. Lystra can't quite control it through the two links defenders. Ball played deep over Strouding's head, and it's going to be out the sideline. And a chance that could have otherwise proved dangerous. Go, boys! Go! 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 Ben Temple encouraging the pressure that's being put on by the Guido strikers. Those of you just joining us, it is 2 0 for the Guido Griffiths as we approach the 10 minute mark remaining in the second half. The Lynx are getting a little bit more frantic. The Griffins are playing with a renewed energy as they see the opportunity to put this game away. You don't even need to find the back of the net. Um, that's been something that's been difficult for this Griffins team this season. So the fact that they could do their thing, which is just playing defense, that's huge. The Lynx playing into the box. It's in the box for the Lynx. First time they've seen the box in a while. Stratting all over that ball, though. Stratting with a master class defensively this game. Ashton Stratting and Reed Vanderwood have put on a master class defensively, with the exception of Reed Fowles, which have proved very dangerous with the Lynx having two scoring opportunities. But they were not able to equalize. Vanderwood knows the ability of his keeper and Ben Temple. Temple sharing his water with his defenders. True brotherhood. The Lynx looking to get underway here. Substitution will take a little bit of time off the clock. Robert Blocker in for Jonah Harsivore. Stratting, he's going to clear this ball. Clears it. Lystra chasing. And that ball is played way too deep for Lystra to do anything productive with it. As the keeper will control it. But Lystra was there just to keep the ball through his hands like it has a couple times this game. Aka. Oh, and the offside flag is off. Off of the goal kick. Aka frustrated. And in some of these city games, it's just the head official, and there are no line people. So some of those offside calls do not get called in regular season games. So to have line people who are specifically watching for that makes for a much more difficult game for teams that rely on offside goals. Vanderwood kicks it deep. Put into the box. Keep it on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Aka turns. He always likes to turn to that left side of the field. Aka looking to play the ball in. Enzo Aka plays it back. Crosses in. Temple secures the ball. An absolute masterclass by Ben Temple. The man of the match, unquestionably. No temple, this key would not be fine. Great chance of the two right there. Ball in the keeper's hands. The Lynx need chances to answer the way. If they are going to do anything in this match. Vanderwood. Reed Vanderwood. Pulling the ball. Kicks it sideways. Ash is trying to go for it. Strouding jumps for it. So does the Lynx. But they are unable to get ahead to the ball. I think. Silva goes down, gets back up. Looks like he got hit in the knee. He'll be all right. Ball's played in. Number five. Ball's played out. Jack connects. Plays it out. Plays back in. Number five from the league. Rellis has it. Rellis getting knocked off the ball. Rellis crosses it. It's going to be a corner kick. It's going to be a corner kick for Links here. As substitutions come in. 
Hard to tell, but it looks like Lansing and Loft will be coming in. Fresh Lake substitution here. I'm taking Ryan DeSilva off. Who, DeSilva seems to be favoring that left leg a little. Or sorry, that right leg, rather. Hard to tell, but he's clearly favoring a leg as he hobbles off. And that would be a huge loss for the stripper spot. Ben Temple has it. What play from Temple as Lystra appears to have a one-on-one -on -one here. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. Lystra still with the ball. He's in the corner. He's trying to play it back towards the center, but he can't. Ball's played deep. Acedillo plays it to connect. Unfortunately, connect is on the other team. Jams. Oh, and he sends 17 flying. Temple calling for Jams to switch to the other side. Plays it to connect in an attempt to start that. Ball's played in. Lucas Weldevore, Lansing. Oh, and the keeper doesn't get his hands to it. That's the reason the first goal went in. The keeper refuses to get his hands to the ball when it's in the box. Something that may prove till the end of the season for this Brebeuf length squad. Dependent on the Griffins' res result in the final. Assuming, if we're under the assumption that the Guido Griffins will win this game, they will meet the winner of Heritage and HCCH in the sauce of finals. And the only way the Lynx have a shot at offset qualification is if the Griffins are able to win the final. And the Griffins have beat Heritage Hawks in the past and have lost, or sorry, have drawn with, drew rather, with the HGCH Knights in league play. Lansing inbounding the ball. Sorry, throw in. Inbounding his basketball turn, but he will throw the ball into play as substitutions come on. Law, boss, into the game. Now it looks like all the strikers for the Griffins have not scored a goal yet, so truly a defensive effort here. And it's going to be a foul call. And it looks like the Griffins were hoping for the full time whistle. But, uh, and Ryan Loft just takes the ball away from the links. Literally runs with it. Um, that That's something. Ball's played in deep. Oh, and he misses it, and he stops going after it. That's... There was no offside flag. Temple plays it deep. Astadio looking to create another chance here. They need a goal. If it's going to happen, it's got to happen now. This comeback. The Lynx needs something. It's kicked out of bounds. Lynx ball. Their inability to get a shot on target in the last 40 minutes. Ball played back. Vanderwood clears it. Right to DJ Boss. Let's see if Boss can convert here. He slows it down. And he turns it over. It's hard to tell what he was attempting to do on that play, but I assume that was not the goal. Ball's played to connect. Ball's played out the back for a corner kick. Great pressure by Hordike there to force the corner. And despite the Griffins being up 2 all, they are putting on pressure as if they are down. They're playing like they're losing, and that's what makes them such a difficult team to beat right now. Enzo Aka has been unable to get any shots on target, and his frustration is visible. Ball's crossed in. Looking for a goal. It's played very high and over the fence. Off the head of Reed Vanderwood. Reed Vanderwood does not seem able to finish on those corner kicks. As he exchanges some words with the center or left back from... Uh, the book there. Ball's played in deep. He seems to be outrunning hard support. Will the keeper get to it? And he does. Temple makes the right read. The referee exchanging some words. It's unclear with who. Ball's played deep.
controlled by Verbo. They really need this chance here. That looks like it's going to be offside, and it is. The flag goes up. That was the correct call from the Lions person. I can confirm as a certified referee myself. Just kidding. Ah, ah, ah. Crowd goes mild. Okay. Vanderwood looks like he will take this kick. And we are approaching the end of this match. And with time ticking down, it seems more and more unlikely we will see a Lynx come back. And that kick goes out the side. Vanderwood with his hands on his head, as is everybody else is, as they are quite confused as to what the objective there was. You can hear the HGCH Knights preparing for their matchup. The Lynx are controlling the ball here, but really need a chance. Ball's put out the side, Jack Vanderwood. Ball's played back. Lynx, a little bit of a desperation push here, but Lansing controls it. Kind of drops it off in the loft speed. Laces to laces. Lansing. Lansing looking to cross. Oh, and it's blocked. What could have been a tremendous chance with Fordyke on the other end. Played out the sideline. Lynx ball. It appeared to go off the Griffins, but they all seem to think that it was their ball. Fordyke. Fordyke has it. Plays it the right way. Jans. Tries to get fancy. Fumbles it a little bit, but Lansing's able to recover. Oh! And Lansing is taken out. In what did not appear to be a play on the ball. It looks like Guido's Sauce of Champions hopes will stay alive here as they are able to keep it in the Lynx end. And I do not have a good handle on how much time is left, clearly, because I thought the game would be over by now. But the Lynx keeper controls that ball. Aka tries to run to it, but the ball goes to Vanderwood. And Enzo Aka has made some tremendous runs this game, but he wasn't able to finish in the first half. And the Guido defense adjusted to him in the second. He seems to be the real threat there for the Lynx offense, and his striking ability has been neutralized, particularly by Reed Vanderwood and Ashton Strouding, who have played a tremendous defensive game, and then, of course, Ben Temple in the net in the first half, who was able to get his hands to each and every shot. It's going to be a corner kick here. Jack Vanderwood will take it. Griffin's taking their time. Maybe looking to just put one more in here. A little bit of a statement goal. They have their insurance goal number two. Maybe looking to make a point here for the other finalists. That will be determined after the next game. Take your time. Take your time, Jack. And Temple telling connect on the sideline to take his time with that throw in as a huge substitution will come in looks like it'll be five guys here from the looks of it Noah Wildeboer, Cameron Bork, Ryan DeSilva will see the field again which is very promising Joel Leister is also back in it also looks like we will see some more Noah Hart support at that first goal the game winning goal if the Lynx cannot manage to find the back of the net one more time. First of all, we'll have that in his total for four subs on immediately. This ball goes through play. Lynx have it. We're trying to force a chance here. First of all, controls it with the chest. Well done. Off it on the sideline. Chance here for the Lynx? No. There you go. Acedillo, looking to create again. He's created so well in this first half. Previous first half, rather. Arsenal, oh, and he's through. Arsenal, looking for his second goal of the match. And he puts it in the bottom right. Noah Arsenal, 
a striking masterclass. And that is certainly the game. The match is in favor as Temple and Vanderwood embrace, knowing they are going to the sauce of championship finals. Propelled behind Ben Temple's tremendous goalkeeping ability and Noah Harsevoort's ability to find the back of the net. Let's see if Harsevoort goes for three here, even. But with the links pressing up so desperately in an attempt to get a goal, bring them in one of an equalizer, seemed almost effortless for Harsevoort, who immediately scored after a tough decision. And now. It would take a miracle for the Lynx to get back into this matchup. And I would put money on it saying that's not something we're going to see today. The back is pulled, well, pushed over by Vanderwood. Vanderwood complains. He had his hand on the back. Vanderwood back again. And what an act of a bit of a jump down there. Go, 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 Plays it up to the silver. The silver goes to the board through the ball. And he does. No, it goes to hard support. Actually, it does go to hard support. That was the intended one. Hard support regains possession. Now the links have it. Aka, one more shot at net. Temple dies in. Stop. It would have been a dangerous attempt. Aka looking very frustrated. He would have had an opportunity there, but seems his opportunities are either squandered by Vanderwood, Stratting, or the man himself, Ben Temple, who seems to have secured himself a clean sheet after a tremendous first half. Temple smiling, talking to people on the sideline. All smiles from this Griffin side, as it seems all but certain. We'll see the next round. Played up, connect. Pursuing that one. He's able to control it. Plenty of space. He's going to play back to Leicester. Leicester. Leicester plays it into the middle. Board. Dangerous from that spot, as we saw earlier this game. Connect. Not able to secure the ball. Hardest board plays it back. Ball is hoofed by Board. That is a ball he scored earlier. We can't blame him for having had it there. But he's not able to find the back of the metal now. It's not a huge concern as the scoreboard is 3 0 for the Griffin side. One of the better offensive performances here from this game that we've seen all season. To pair that with a tremendous defensive effort, particularly from Harsevoort, you can go to Harsevoort, Reed Vanderwood. Ashton Stratting, Ben Temple, who have just been thorn in the side of Enzo Aka, the strikers, who do not appear to be used to scoring zero goals in a game. This is a squad that has scored over two and a half goals per game this season. And it's headed in! Joel Leistra! He finds it with his head after it bounced off a couple other players. It's now a 4 0 lead. And the Lynx looks like the life has been sucked out of him. In this game, it's only a matter of time until the whistle blows. The Guido Griffins are in the Sasa Single A Championship Finals. And the defensive effort from the Lynx, they look very deflated and. Maybe they just haven't played a team with the offensive caliber of the Griffins. But the Griffins, credit to their coaching staff, they've clicked this game. They truly have clicked this game on the offensive end. Noah Harsavor, Joel Lystra, with the most recent goals, Cameron Borg, 
also found the back of the net. The three different goal scorers, Noah Hart score putting two in for himself. Just a tremendous effort here as they secure their berth. And it's something that the Griffins have not been too successful in this season. They've, they've lost games because they have scored zero goals. And it looks like Harvey Support's going to try to have one more, but the offside flag is up. Lines first and says, you're not getting your third goal on that opportunity, Noah. But he'll look for another. He, he's, he's poised to get a hat trick here. And that will be the ball game. Tito Griffins. Give the book a game to remember. Ben Temple, who I will dub the man of the match, secures himself the clean sheet and stops numerous shots in the first half. So it's really a tremendous effort by Guido here. Their offense struggled in the first half. They were able to turn it around. It was a 1-0 lead after the first 40. They were able to find it back in the net three more times. And just pump the air out of this book team to look demoralized. And the defense neutralized Enzo Arca. So that's going to be it for us in this first matchup. Guido Griffiths has secured themselves a spot in the finals. And our next matchup will be the HECH Knights taking on the Air Tatars, fighting for the privilege to play the Guido Griffins the championship looking to take on the banner just a remi quick reminder about our format here there is a double berth in effect for offset qualification meaning two teams from Tossa will be able to secure their place in offset so the winner of the finals will be given an automatic berth as the Tossa champions as always and then the loser of the finals will play whoever lost to the Sasa champions in the first round. So for both may not be done yet, and Guido may not be done if they manage to lose to the Sasa championship final. That's it for me. The second match will start 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. rather kickoff. We will be back. More Sasa championship action now. <laughs>
more water did it. Wait, who's the guy now? I thought Lucas Bowers was it. That's Lucas Bowers from the man. Oh, I was looking at Heritage. <laughs> okay. So you guys want waters? Um, I mean, if that's free cater, that's free. I don't have free cater, so I don't bother. Okay, yeah, then we'll use some water or cater. Nah, you're not going to do it. some, like, you don't want a bottle. Uh, you can get like water bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't even read these names. Who sent that to me? As we get underway here in the second first round of the South Single A Soccer Championship of the HCC Ignite, where Red taking on the hand. Kickoff will commence shortly as both teams get ready in their huddles, try to get a little bit amped up before this matchup. Both teams will be playing for the spot. In the Sausage Championship Finals, playing against the Beetle DeBrett Christian High School Griffin. Get on the way shortly. We'll be back for kickoff. CCH will begin by kicking off. Yeah. Number 21, Seth DeWeer, lining up with the ball here. We're good to go. Knights, Hawks, first round sausage championship action. Hydra plays it in deep, looking for a chance right away. Heritage controls the ball. Brower plays it to Hybert on the wing. Hybert crosses the ball in. It's a beautiful cross. Shinkai with a head to the ball. And that one just misses the net. It's a random chance early from the HBC Knights, who are looking to come out. Stamp out the flame with the hair to talk to early. Early and often here for the Knights. Already with the chance. Keeper, Jacob Simka. Then in the middle. Sure, thanks. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, do the story. Thank you guys so much. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, we would love to come up here. Ball's played into the midfield. Shinkai is down. Put onto the wing. He shoots it from the wing. Shinkai wants a through ball. Doesn't get it. Can't steal it. Crossed in. Gets ahead to it. The ball's still in the middle. Fox is full. HD looking so good early. Jason Hybert plays it into the middle. Brower has the ball. Brower kicks it in. Hybert covers it off the deflection. Hybert will get the ball. Brower is still trying to put his headband back on as it fell off early after he played the ball with his head. Russian. Hybert's holding the ball for him. He's got it back on. Maybe he needs to tie up a little bit tighter, but he seems to be okay now. Number six, 
Keep it up. Ball 15 up the side. Ball is played up to number eight. That's Judah Dykstra chasing down the ball. Played up the side. Great defensive play by Dirk Debris. Ben Heiskamp. Oh, he's going to throw it in. Handed it off to number 11. Zach Rooney. Ball played in. Nice looking to clear. Can't get it out of the 18 yard box. Ball is played up. Back in the midfield. Heidberg. Heidberg to Heidberg. Mason Jones. Both J. Two ball picked off. Iber gets it back, and it's cleared out the side. And that one is going to join us on the roof. And it is also going to roll over oh, man, to the other side of the school. That one finds the parking lot. Yeah, that one. That one's in the parking lot. I see someone running around though. That was quite the clear. Um, usually they try to clear it off the soccer field, but this guy tried to clear it off the property. Definitely kept the Knights from getting a chance inside the box or inside the city. Hyper into Shinkaya. It's cleared again, this time within the field. Played backwards, there could be some control. Communication from this AT is unparalleled by their opponents here. You hear them talk to each other about the whole game. Something that will surely go to the Hyper, the ball on the sideline. He plays it up. Kaya in hot pursuit. Play the bounce up to Kaya, but he's unable to get it. Ball play deep. No one to Brees is unable to get his speed to it. It's a shot. A little bit too eager there. That shot is wide. Could he use the second to steady himself to get a better shot on target? But Jesse Duma, for sure, will get another shot on target. Between Duma and Dykstra up front for the uh, Heritage Hawks. They'll be receiving the brunt of the chances. Full kick taken. Foot deep, headed on by Ben Howard. That's a weird one after that one. Ryan Brower grabs the ball. All play back in the middle. Beautiful game go. And it's inside for Seth the Weird. Seth the Weird, one on one with the keeper. Oh, and it's wide. Seth the Weird had a one on one with the keeper. A bit of an awkward angle. Rolled it just by the side post. The timing was almost there to tap it in, but Seth the Weird just ran ahead of the fellow striker. But if chances like that keep coming up, it's only a matter of time to find the play past Pinky. <laughs> Both kicks taken. Brower heads it back into the uh, offensive third. Pitching Kai, pitching that, headed back to the keeper. Nobody press on the number eight. Eight D is playing like they are down right now. That is something that has been a trademark of their team this season. They hustle after every single ball. Hyper right lays it up. Back to Hyper once again. Hyper pushed off the ball, trips, takes the ball. Heritage. Possession. That's the weird. Off to Brower. Brower chasing it down. Can't get there in time. Oh! That one was not a shot off the ball. That's going to be a foul. Pierce on Zach Armstrong. Can't touch the number from here, but yes, that appears to be number 20, Zach Armstrong. He's booked out number 10 from the Heritage Hogs, Jesse Duma. He kicks the Heritage Hogs. Take about to be taken. It's put in the box. Cleared out fairly easily. 
Shinkai. Now, what appears to be a two on two. Set the weird one of the through ball. Shinkai took a minute to get there and still could not put it through. Ryan Brower after the ball. Kicked him out there. Brower still in control. And Brower is called for a foul in what seems to be quite a questionable whistle. Protest of the AC bench. Or, or Brower controls that one. Fascinating move there from Brower. Tiber plays it in. That one's tough, but Brower's there. Brower is everywhere, right? It's going to be a throw in here. Number on that player, but it looks like they're ran the start. It's a two hand push. Julian McCoydon gives Ryan Brower a piece of his mind, pushes him right back, but no way on free kick from Gordon. Jason Heiberg has had some tremendous build up so far. The kick takes this free kick, plays it into the fog. Hog, beautiful. Punched out. Hyder has been creating chance after chance for the Knights. And this was a almost a chance there for Judah Dykstra. He was chasing that down and Dirk was reaching, waiting for Luke Bowers, the HGT keeper, to pick it up. Well, it's headed. Carter Vandercook. Kind of slips a little bit, it looks like, when he plays that, but he recovers there. Ben Brower on that ball. No can do as Curtis Ott. Ben Brower, he's going. Ben Brower making a run, he falls. Brower was looking for a call there. Get it. Ryan Brower has it on to Jason Heiberg. Looks to put the connection to volleyball as well. It's interesting to see. Jason Hybrid's playmaking ability appearance to build the goal score to the through ball to Jason Hybrid, Jason Hybrid, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Oh, and he's stopped. Jason Hybrid could utilize the chip shot there over the diving keeper. But no luck. But those chances that I've seen the effortlessly create. Jason Hybrid. As I was saying earlier, seemingly a playmaker in multiple sports. He's a center in volleyball, tremendous one at that, went to McMaster University, played for the nationally ranked Marauders. And in basketball, he's not too shabby as well. Top in the 25 seed quite easily, but here in soccer, certainly a tremendous playmaker and great chances. Boston, bit deep, Shakai can't get it. It looks like he's creating another chance here. Ben Brower has it. He stumbles a little bit, able to play it to Vandercock. Chips it in. Header by the weird find it way to the Kishu College. Over the crossbar and gone. So chance after chance here for the Knights early as Arsenal substitutes waiting on the side. Ready to go. Looks like the subs are going to come in. Set the weird. Come out. And so the Chikai will come out. It's going to be a total striker swap. And Lefty Demakis takes the field. Alongside another striker whose number I cannot see. So the other striker is going to be Seth Vandenbrink. Seth Vandenbrink and Lefty Demakis are the sub for HGT. Bringing some fresh legs on the offensive end. She's creating so many chances, maybe his first leg. Or he just puts something in the back of the net. Seth Vanderbilt trying to outpace the defender. Communication between the defenders and the team. Playing the ball off that sideline, and HG's unable to stop them. Playing it towards the middle. Could this be a chance? Cross it in. Cleared out. It's going to be a throw in. Not even a corner, just a throw in from there to Todd. Throw in good. Vandercock heads it back. 
See who steps up to take this penalty. Lucas Bowers looking to get a stop here in what could be a huge sort of event in this game. It's going to be number six, William Van Hoydonk. Getting ready to take this penalty. Lucas Bowers sizing him up. A stop here would be huge for the Patriots and the Ice Knights team, which just seems in control this whole match. The Heritage Hawks, who have struggled in the possession battle, have many chances. Shots here. Bowers. Bowers. Oh, my God. Ah! And Hoy Dog. Bottom left corner. Hawks. 1-0. Oh, and that is so unfortunate for the Knights. As Bowers chooses the right side to dive to, but he can't get a hand to it. And then Hoy Dog. Expert placement. And he finds the back net. It is 1-0 for the Hawks. That is one nothing for the Hawks. Nice looking to bounce back quickly here. Right, forgive my camera work. As I am commentating, doing the camera, and holding game sheets all at the same time. Man of many talents, some might say. Not to flatter myself, as there's a throw in here for the night. Looking to equalize early. That ball's played out by the man himself in Hoydong. Wow, what? What? Lost from Hawks. Jamakis, Jamakis. Jamakis still has the ball, but he cannot get a shot off. Hyper controls it. Jason Hyper is going to redeem himself here. Ball played deep. Dirk DeBreeze, hot pursuit. Dirk DeBreeze will get there. Not without Dykstra, right on his tail. Jonah Hyper, ball, plays it. Ball, play it. Dykstra. Jason Hyper, pounding and harassing. He will not give that ball up. Nice one, ball. I believe they want to have ball coming. Almost headed on. Another opportunity here for the Asian talk. Number eight is just a quality of coming up at the Dykstra. Number ten is Jesse Duma. Number ten is Jesse Duma. Number eight is the Dykstra. Quality of husband and education. Looking for hours. Drop kick there. Comes over the head of number 25. Like a Dykstra. Dirk DeBreed, off the sideline. Like a dike, on the pursuit. Uses his body to try to jockey that ball. Here it is. Here it is. It's put in hastily. I was just standing there. Totally forgot to bring the camera. Apologies, folks. <laughs> I started to bring the camera. Apologies, folks, but there's no chance in the box, fortunately. Oh, the head was fucking in. The head was fucking in. Heritage looking for a second goal. Here he is, the shot. And number 15 for Heritage. Turns it around. And the other side. Duma almost had a chance there.
Tremendous cross by Vandenbrink, but the ball cannot find a foot. Brower with the ball. He's in the box and is taken out by Otten. Dykstra's looking for a through ball here. Heisinger plays it up the middle. Jason Hyber once again looking to create a chance for the ACCH Knights here. Julian has the ball here. That's Ben Hoydonk. He was the one to put in the penalty for the Heritage Hawks early. Ben Hoydonk plays it directly up. Dykema tries to get in the middle. Brower tries to control it and give it to Hybert, but no can do. Other Hybert, Jonah Hybert, right back for the Knights here. Trying to make something happen. He does. Vandebon able to successfully set what looks like a basketball shoot. Jonah Hybert crosses the ball in and then caught by Simke. Simke successfully neutralizes that chance. And HG is looking for even more subs. Looks like five of the 10 players on the field will be taken off. Lucas Bowers secures that ball. He's gonna kick it right back. Dykema heads it on. Brower pursuing Otten. Otten kicks it up the sideline, and it's out. Substitutions coming in for ACC. Looks like Ben Brower will retake the field. Looks like we have a timeout. I know we had before. Can't lie. East Coast. Oh, was it like a sports timeout? Technical? Somebody just yelled water break. That's all I think. 
We have a water break here. We'll return to the action. Beautiful day out here. Sitting around 30 degrees. Too warm to rest catching. Talking forward, so it's still picking up if I talk forward. Should I try to like? Well, yeah, it should because you know, turn the mic a little bit. So. Is it just like muffled, or can you not hear it at all? That's it now. Oh, okay. The ball's thrown in. Ryan Brow, we're running after that one. No rest for Ryan Brower as he's been in the whole game. Creating chances for the Knights. The Knights had a bunch of chances early, but have been unable to successfully convert on them and now are struggling to find chances as the Hawks are playing some better defense. That penalty really turned the tide, and that is something that we said would happen. If they were able to convert on that penalty, and they were, and that really turned the tide of this match. We're sure HD will recover as Redikoff handles that one. Heidberg, Redikoff is calling for the ball wide. He's able to get a touch on that ball. It's heritage ball, Redikoff dismayed at that call. Ruben Vanderneet not complaining, but looking unhappy. Ball's played in, Vanderneet plays it back. Dirk DeVries will control this one. He doesn't control it. It goes out of bounds. It looks like Heritage is in control here as they play it up to number eight due to Dykstra. Carter Vandercroft looking to make something happen. He bowls by the defender. He's looking to cross the ball in, pulls it back through his legs. Vandercroft's in the box. Everybody wants a penalty there from the HDCH side. But nothing is called as the ball makes its way back to Bowers who boots it up to the midfield. HD will try again. Ryan Brower plays it in. Carter Vandercock unable to secure it. Jason Hybert. Nick Redekop calling for it up the side. Ball is controlled by Heritage. He plays it back to Ruben Vanderney. Ruben Vanderney plays it. Oh, and he makes the defender slip. Nick Redekop tries to cross the ball in unsuccessfully. Going to be a throw in here for the HTCH Knights, Ryan Brower. Thank you. Publishing Kaya goes for it. No luck. It's shot by Seth the Weird, but a whistle goes. Handball on Tobishin Kaya. Heritage coach is encouraging their side. Bring some energy. Maybe put a second goal in here. And HD still looking for that equalizer. And they've regained some of the form that we saw early in this matchup. Redikoff up the sideline. Can he keep it in bounds? He does. And that ball is kicked very hard to the point where. Number 15 could not control it with his head. Redikoff into Shikai. Shikai running. No luck for Shikai. Hyper heads it on. Other side of the field. Vandercrook controls it. Vandercrook to Brower. He wants a handball. No handball is called. Still 1 0 for the Hawks. Red Brower. on the sideline here. Ryan Brower ends with the top. He's going to play it into the middle. He plays it into the middle set to weird, not ready for that ball. Unable to get to it. Heritage now has the ball deep. How's he go with the ball? Nick Redekop plays it back. Zach Armstrong up the sideline to Van Neat and Shinkaye. Shinkaye able to block that clear. Ball is kept in by Shinkaye. Shinkaye plays it up. Number 19, Ruben Vanderney, unable to cross that ball in, but it's still in the opponent's end zone. 
I know, I'll set the film out. Going to be throwing for Vanderney. Ball's put into Ryan Brower, can't control it. Jason Heiber plays it in, ball rolls. Looked like he was trying to have a crack at the net there, but was unable to get the ball in the air. As Shinkai controls it. Shinkai boosts the ball to the side. What almost certainly was not the goal there. Ball goes up the sideline. Hawks in control. Seth the Weird chases it down. Great hustle from Seth the Weird there as he's trying to create a chance. He had that one chance early in the match, one on one with the keeper, and was unable to put it away. Shinkaye. Shinkaye plays it to. He didn't play it to Redikov. Dirk DeVries was calling for the ball to go to Redikov. And Judah Dykstra had the ball. It's going to be HD Knights. Throwing the ball in. Vandercrook plays it deep to Ben Brower. Ben Brower, he's past the defense. Looking for a cross. Crosses it in. Oh, and there was nobody there, but if somebody was, it would have been a beautiful far post goal. The ball's still in. The Hawks barely hanging on to this 1 0 lead. There's going to be a handball call. Again, PHCH Knights. Ball's put deep. Judah Dykstra's on the wing there with number seven. Number seven, Kemper. Number eight, Judah Dykstra. Trying to make something happen here as the ball slowly rolls out of bounds. Vandercruck throws it. Headed on by Brower. No avails. The ball falls to number 16, the court. Vandercruck hoofs it. Ben Brower tries to secure the ball. No luck, falls to the ground. Dirk DeVries, he whiffs on the ball. Number 10, Jesse Duma trying to get a chance. But DeVries recovers. Ball is kicked out the side. Vanderneek cannot control that ball. Zach Broining will throw the ball in here after the substitutions. Ball's in play. When Hoydonk plays it deep, he's the one that scored the penalty earlier so far, the man of the match, with the game-winning goal, if nothing else were to happen. We're still in the first half, though. Plenty of soccer to be played. Brower up the sideline, Vanderney. Vanderney comes to the middle. Jason Hyber, ball back in his feet, plays it deep. Simke, keeper's ball. Balls up the sideline. Heritage coaches with a sense of urgency saying, get into their half of the field before they can set up defensively. But they set up defensively, and Carter Vandercart takes that one away. Ryan Brower in the middle. Plays it to Jason Heiser. Jason Heiser looking to create a chance once again. Vanderneek chasing that ball down. Seen it in this corner of the field so many times. This will actually be a corner kick. Or sorry, a throw-in rather. Tough angles video and a tough angle for myself to see. Zach Armstrong. Puts the ball deep. A lot of power behind that one. Ben Brower trying to secure the ball. He does successfully. Ben Brower landed on a bit of a late whistle. It's going to be a free kick. Brower favoring his right thigh. Now his back. Just a rough fall there. Hyber looking to create a chance. HG making their runs. Set the weird. No good. But it's not to no avail as the Knights secure themselves a corner kick. Jason Hybert once again looking to create an opportunity for the Knights. 
Chinkaye will be making a run at that far post, so it'll be interesting to see if maybe the ball will find its way to him. Oh, and Heidbert finds the side netting with his corner kick. Certainly not the intent behind that one. As a goal kick will be for Semke. Simki, near half. Oh, and here goes Dykstra. And Dykstra can't make something of it, but wow, that was a bit of a scary moment for the HCCH Knights and a little bit of a heart drop for the Hawks when nothing came of it. Shikai rolling on the ground, made it just a knock there to play her off the ball. Playing goes overhead. Certainly a perk of living in Hamilton. Live right by the airport. Hamilton, Shikaye, fakes one way, goes the other, plays it into Ben Brower, who's going to give it. Vanderkruck plays it off to him. Vanderkruck, surrounded by two heritage players. Otten manages to secure that, but it's played to Ryan Brower. Oh, and Ryan Brower, golden opportunity there, but not able to control it. Ball is played to Redikoff. They're still not out of heritage to pair yet. Heidbert in. Vanderneet cleared. Zach Armstrong plays it up. Ryan Brower has another opportunity. Plays it up the side to Vanderkruck. Otten gets there first. It's caught by the heritage coach. Curtis Otten has been a force on the defense line. It's Jonah Heidbert. Subs on for Vanderkruck. Those of you that remember last year's Sauce Championships, this HD team is dearly missing Brendan Vanderkruck, tremendous player who went on to play at Redeemer University this season. Made a great impact there. Chikai going after that ball, knocked over the Heritage player. No calls made. Dirk DeVries in pursuit, but he's going to leave that one, drop it off for. Oh, and Judah Dykstra knocks over Dirk DeVries. And she's lucky he didn't get a booking there. Just a warning. Because that was not a play on the ball. Lucas Bowers had the ball in his hands, but he got knocked over from behind. And it is going to be the power call as well as the warning. It's going to be a goal kick, Lucas Bowers. Still one nothing for the Heritage Hawks here. A surprise penalty kick goal early in this match. Ben Brower. Dirk DeVries has the ball right outside the box. Takes it deep. Fiber will control it. Look to create something. Ben Heisinger trying to keep the ball in play. And he successfully, unsuccessfully rather, kicks the ball out of bounds off his own heel. Falls into Shinkai. Shinkai, a little bit of a toe tap in the air there. Ryan Brower, Shinkai being vocal going for the ball. Man, just played off. Ben Brower. Ben Brower is within the box. Wants a corner kick, and he will be awarded a corner. Corner kick is awarded. Jason Hybert looking to create something here. Heidbert plays it in. Brower looks to get his head on it. He does. Now with a dangerous looking header from Ryan Brower as he all finds the top corner. But Simke is able to get there. Played up. All right. The court. Isinga in pursuit of Redikop. Put up the sideline. Not controlled by Vanderneek. Goes out the side. Ball thrown in play. Heritage tries to control it, but Shinkai is able to get the ball. Plays it all the way to the other side of the field. Looking for a full swing here. Ben Brower. 
Auten gets there first. Heritage coach angry about Ben Brower's use of physicality there. There, there was some contact both ways. Will be thrown for the NCCH Knights, taken by Carter Vandercock. Ben Brower will take the throw and heads it on in. Lucky to Mackis. Body checks the keeper. And Mackis just, after pursuing that ball, was unable to slow down. The keeper who jumped right in the way. Secured the ball. Took the contact. Simke looks to create something right away out of this goal kick. The one nothing lead for Heritage. Still only shot that found the back of the net was that penalty kick by Van Hoydong. Ball's up the side. Vanderkruck plays it into the middle for Demacus. Demacus turning with the ball. Played back in the middle. Brower. Brower has an opportunity to do something to kick out the defense. Ben Brower shots high over the crossbar. Simpson will get another goal kick. Plenty of opportunities here for the Knights. Lacking conversion. The Hawks struggled to get any chances within the box outside of that penalty kick they had earlier. And that, I could see the penalty kick could prove lethal for the HGCH Knights if they could not find the back of the down the other end. Brower plays it to Hyper. Back to Brower. Brower's in the middle. Demarcus with the ball, looking for a chance. It's taken away, kicked off to Brower. Ryan Brower looks to control the ball here, and he does. Plays it backwards to Vandercrush. Looking to create a chance on the other side of the field. Hyder pointing. Ball is controlled by Heritage. Played up. Ball is taken back. Seth Vandenbrink here. Ben Brower on the side. Out the sideline, Auten will throw the ball in. There it's talks. Van Hoydonk back to Auten. Auten plays it deep. Dykstra. It looks like that's the halftime whistle. As there's a one nothing lead for the Heritage Hawks off a penalty kick early in this first half. We'll head to the break. Be back soon. Heritage 1, HD 0. Back in a minute.
Who do we got? Still one zip. Still one zip. All right, throwing here for heritage. Up to line 15. Trying to break, break the road to goalie. to the right side, that over to Ruben, but too far, just out of bounds. Throwing for number 11, just for the half line. Off the box. I'm going to make something out there on the left side. Get it up to the middle, it didn't work though. Jason's there. Eric has got it back up the right wing now. Good there, dude. Carter Bennett kick on the left. Jason. But he's screaming. They're running towards the goal. Goalie's there. Jacob Sinky right there with the pick up. Jacob Sinky at the boot. Pushed it past the half line right to the center. He's there. Are they there though? Rick has got it back to the crack, way wide on the right. Hits the back bench one of the teachers call it. Bowers. Goal kick. Quick goal kick. Carter's not even ready. But he gets it. He's on the left wing. He's Ryan. Crossed by the Heritage dude. Pink feet. Gonna try to go for a cross here. Orange is gonna take it all the way. He has a man behind him. Still in there. Look at the crowd. Barrett. With the big boot. Really deep. Buddy guys there. Good strong defense on the heritage line. I'm proud to mad at buddy guy for uh ball on his feet. I just look up the deck and Jason boots it too far for him to get it. Throw for a heritage. Doesn't even make it into the core. Throw in here for uh, Carter. Didn't go in, so they're going to get it back over there. Take two. Just a little short throw in there. The weird's there to kick it out. Take three. Then he gets a head on it. It's a weird back out of the exact same spot. Number four from the same spot. See if I'm just going to make something out of this one. What do we have a call here? We get penalty. Heritage gets it. Heritage gets a free kick here. See if they can make something from it. Big strong D line against you though. 
This is Bowers. Get the hand on it. Gets bodied though by Harrison. Stares him down a bit. Getting a bit heated. Actually, AC just looking for that goal. Lucas Bowers the boot. Pushes it up. Hopefully, our forwards can get there. AC makes tries to make something out of it right to the mid. Heritage. Heritage some fancy moves over there, but gets picked off by Jason Hacker. Jason Hacker still got up the right wing. He's went about half the field so far. He's taking it all the way into the box. Booted out by the D-man from Heritage. So it's going to be a corner kick here. Number 21. The weird taking it. Corner. See if they can make something out of this kick. Very low, straight shot off the head of a heritage. Total got it picked up outside of the box. Jason's fighting some heritage, dude. Number five, Vandercook on the left, holding on the ball. Oh, with an attempt at a shot. Gets deflected right to the goalie. Take Sinky, goalie, big tall man, probably like six nine. Hey Caleb, I'm doing your job. Kind of bad though. Oh, my job. Yeah. Toba's got it here on the right. Tries to make a little cross there to rhyme. Doesn't work. Strong here to defense. Big commotion going on in the oh. field. Ryan Bowers got a back heritage guy dead on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he shot. Jacob Sinky saves it. <laughs> Big save. Play stopped. We're good. Heritage guy's good. <laughs> I don't know how to compensate. It's just coming off my tongue. <laughs> Bro, it's been dead on the field. Nah, that is crazy. All right, Caleb, take her back, man. <laughs> Thanks for covering for me. I appreciate it. No one, no one scored, right? No, we're still. We've been burning all time. I got some spin on that. And we're still one nothing. As yeah, HG is desperately looking for the equalizer. Vanderkruck, set the weird. Set the weird, looking for a second chance. That ball poked out the back end line. It's going to be a corner. Set the weird tosses it there to get things underway. Jason Hybert, playmaker for this HD team, as we've seen all game long. Yeah, we have to, okay. Oh, you can't hold it. Okay. Jason Hyber looking desperately to set up for a goal here as this HG team only has around 30 minutes to find the back of the net before they become fans for the Heritage team hoping for a challenge match. Ball's crossed in. And it's kicked out. Number 20 from Heritage. No strike. Stroke that one. <laughs> Jason Hybert. Set the weird run. Oh, and it's headed into play. Oh, it's off Ryan Brower's head. It was a tremendous header. And then as they attempted to clear it, set the weird shot. Blocked. Wow. Ben Hoydonk is doing it all this game. He has the only goal. And that's as good as a save. Set the weird would have surely found the back of the net. Jason Hyper, third consecutive corner kick. That one's floated in through Ben Brower's legs. Hyper over the crossbar as he catches the bottom of that ball. And Heritage, it just, it just seems like HG is unable to put the ball in the back of the net here. No shortage of chances. Play deep. Redekop will control. Up to Hybert. Beautiful control by Hybert on the laces. 
Picked off on. Brower takes that one in the inner thigh. Takes it like a champ. Number 10, Duma. Duma versus Cypher. Duma turns it around. Duma. Duma with the shot. Corner kick off of Reddick Top's shoulder. Boy, has that man got big shoulders. Come to you, big son. <laughs> Ben Hoydock is one goal of his own, and now he's looking to set up another one as he'll take the corner. Substitution waiting on the sideline for the Hawks. The Hawks. Oh, and he misses. He swung at the ball and just totally whipped on it. Temper. Vandercruck. Vandercruck trying to go up the field. And there's a lot of bodies getting thrown around here. Ball's played up the side. Out the side, Heritage Ball. Substitution coming in here. Number 14. Cameron, the last name is not legible. Subbing off. Can't particularly see what's going on out here, but I'll give you the best idea. Heidberg clears the ball. Brower in pursuit. That man definitely put his head to that ball. Brower streaking. Brower's taken out cleanly, no whistle. Shinkai recovers the ball though. Hybert now. Knocked off the ball. Ben Brower is trying to get the ball back for the Knights here. Knights have possession. Ben Brower plays it through the legs of the defender, but they cannot obtain possession. Vandercroft. Vandercroft pressuring. That's my view. Hybert has it. Jason Hybert plays it off. Shinkai, no. Jonah Hybert looks to secure the ball here. He does it successfully. Plays it to Heisinger. And Heisinger puts it off Hybert's face and out of bounds. Throwing deep. Heisinger can't get his head on it. Or what the call is there, but it's going to be a free kick for the Heritage Hawks. Free kicks right beside the sideline. And they'll have at it here, looking for a second goal. It's controlled inside the box, and then it is put out the back line as it'll be a goal kick here, Lucas Bowers. So far, Simpsky with the clean sheet. And just an unlucky break, conceding a penalty. Maybe ill-discipline, maybe poor luck. Snubs are still coming onto the field. Uh, so the goal kick will be retaken. Dirk DeVries here will take the kick once again. Dirk DeVries tries to kick it to the same spot, but this time Duma's there. Can't keep hold of it. Vanderkirk plays it deep. Vanderbrink, or Vanderbrink rather. Pursuing something up the side. Ball's thrown in. Hawks looking for a push. Plays it deep. Redikop gets there.
play it in. Oh, and he misses the ball. Redicott does, or Heidbert rather, cannot control it. And both guys fall down out of bounds, so no whistle blown. Ball's played into the box. It's high. Bowers secures it. Doesn't break a sweat on that one. Bowers, beautiful deep kick. Ben Brower is going to chase it down, but it looks like it's going to go up the sideline before he can get there. Hawks ball. And that one is headed off of Ben Brower. Uh, they move, nobody behind him this time. Vandercrock with two hairs chalked on and plays it up the side. It's kept in. That one goes out. But it's going to be a nice ball as they touch it before it goes out. Brower up the sideline. They were looking for an opportunity there. And in spite of the Knights dominating the possession and chances battle early, it looks more and more likely here that the Hawks may secure a victory. Vandercrook plays it deep, out the side. And the desperation here from the Knights as they try to find the back of the net yet one more time. Trying to keep rolling here. They slow down their advance a little bit, but they're still trying to get it in the ball. And the 16 to court. Trying to do something there. At least he gets the throw in. Auten up the side. Vandercrook. Vandercrook plays it back, plays it up the side to Brower. Lucas Bowers gets the ball. HD needs a chance. The Hawks successfully pressuring them and keeping it in their half of the field. Brower plays it in. Nobody there to take the ball. Vandercrook played up to Demacus. Demacus can't control it. Ball is cleared. Heidberg gets ahead to it but puts it the wrong way. Bauer secures it. Ball is played up again. Dirk DeVries in a little bit of a passing match with Heisinger. Ryan Brower hounding and harassing. Ball is played to Lucas Powers once again. Ryan Brower. And I'll get that shot on target. Seth Vandenbrink is pushed off the ball. Tim Key will get a goal kick as HD encouraging each other. And we got to get up. Push themselves into the box. Desperately looking for a goal here. Man the ball and subs into play here, and the ball is going to go right to him to start. Man the ball plays it into Hyper. Hyper in the middle, plays it up to Demacus. A lot of their through balls are finding their way right into Simkey's hands. It's surely not the goal for the HBC Titans. Throws it deep. Demacus gets to it. Demacus turning. Get to get throwing. Vandercroft throws it in. Power. Head to the ball. Keeper. Simki is cleaning up these chances, leaving no room for error. 
like nothing easy to HD. HD really pushing for a goal here. Heidbert plays it back to Heidbert. Heidbert looking up the wing for Dykema. Can't find him. Ball's played to Heritage. Vanderbrink will force the turnover to Redikov. Heidbert secures the ball. Played up the wing. Dykema. HD creating a chance here. Vanderbrink to Brower. Brower back to Vanderbrink. They're inside the box now. Side netting. No goal. Vanderbrink has a crack at it. Looks like it's going to be a water break here. Knights desperately looking for a goal here in this last half of the second half. One nothing. Oh, back in a minute. As the teams take the field once again, it is a one nothing lead for Heritage. Or looking to get an insurance goal here, maybe. But at least keep HD their half of the field. Keep them from finding the back of the net. What HD hopes would be an equalizer. Simke plays it deep. Van der Bottom and the Max from HD are there, and they're able to push it their way. Otten. Off Otten, out the side. It'll be an HP throw in. Oh. Yeah, you too. The linesman says, heritage ball. Ball's played deep. Dykstra then pursuit. Dykstra. Bowers makes the right play. And the ship. Wow, that was a shot. Eisenhower. Nowhere near the net there. That's risky for Lucas. Christian Torts will tell him. Oh, really? Yeah. That probably hurt. I thought he was nervous at kick like that. I feel like he's limping. And Bauer's limping here. Ryan Brower. Up the field to Demacus. Demacus to Vandabon. Vandabon back to Demacus. Demacus sworn by Hawks players, unable to do much there. Vanderbond's going to hand it off to Vandercrux for the throw in. The Heritage coach encouraging some urgency here as the ball's thrown into the box, but nobody connects with it. Redikoff plays it up. Jason Heidbert. Heidbert to Vandercrux. Vandercrux in the box. Controlled. Clear. Eric DeBreeze chasing the ball down. Misses the ball. Ball on the sideline. Fortunately, I cannot visualize what is going on. Here's uh, it's on the sideline. Uh, uh, ball. ball thrown in. Otten cross. Ball's in play. Lucas Bowers stops that one in the track. Bowers not happy with that kick. Ball's right back to the Heritage. Ball's in the middle. Ready copy. Off there, however. Ball's played by Dykstra. George Powers, Powers there. Powers has been there. 
Fortunately for him, his team conceded a penalty. Otherwise, it would be a deadlock. Looks like Vandenbrink had a decent chance there, but just a little bit too out of control. And that's the ball close to two's laces. the ball in here. Go to Hybert. It's out the sideline. It's going to be a throw in HD. Go to Hybert. We'll take it hastily. It's since Jason Hybert who heads it on in. No mistakes here from the Heritage defense. In fact, he takes up on with the shoulder. Jason Hybert trying to play to the other side. It's a bit further back. Van der will chase it down. Caleb Van der Bond. Van der Bond plays it in the middle. Van der Kirk has it now. Hybert. It's all just being side to side. Hybert was going to have a crack at it this year, but that one's going to be up the sideline. Jonah Hybert. Ball's thrown in for Jonah Hybert. Dykeman was on the sideline. That one's also up. Jonah Hybert looks to throw it in once again, trying to create a chance here as we're running out of time. one nothing here this year. Ball's into Redikoff. Redikoff looks back, plays it forward. Heritage plays it forward, Redikoff has it. Redikoff to Hybrid. Ball is secured. Duma. Or oh, Judah Dykes around. I'm oh, sorry. This is Judah Dykes. It looks like Dykes are down. Something you don't like to see in any soccer game. Just took a hard fall. A little bit of physical contact on it. Well, that ball had its way out. Looks like he's holding his head. I'll take a quick break here. We'll be back in a minute. Shout out to Ben Temple. Watching. You should get me food. Just saying. Alrighty. And as we get underway here, Dykstra is standing and walking off the field. That is a good sign for this here to talk team. He has seemingly been a huge part of their offense. Took a bit of a rough fall there, but I'm sure we'll have an update on that later. Heading into the next game. If Heritage continues to hold this lead. Zach Armstrong heads it on. Hybert into the middle for Vandercruck. It's taken away. Duma. Can't get secure the ball there. As right top plays it into the middle. HD. Francis struggling to get it out of their zone. Brower with the ball on the sideline. Brower plays it up. Brower is knocked over. And there's going to be a foul call there. And that is a fair call. A shoulder to the chest. Vander Crux will take a free kick. Ball's played in softly to Brower in the middle. Brower back up to Vander Crux. Secures that with his chin. Jason Hyper has it here. Looks like he's going to play deep to Hova. Shikai had a nice run there. Was not found. Dirk Debris plays it in. That one is way wide. Chance wasted. Nice. 
knights are trying just about anything and everything at the stands now. Not much time left in this game, maybe just under halfway in the second half. Just over halfway, rather. So they have a little bit less than a half of play. One goal in the back of the net. Not an impossible task for like this HP team. They can certainly find the back of the net. But it's just, with the way this game is trending, it doesn't seem to be right. The red account rock is not up at all. into the box, but eight people control it. Brower plays the ball out. Brower and a swarm of hawks. Vandercruck secures it, plays it through. Hilbishikai. And the goalie comes out, does his job, neutralizes that chance. Smart move from Semke, the keeper. Ball thrown in by Dykema. Heiberg. Great touch by Heiberg. Into the middle. Brower not expecting that mistake from the Heritage defense. Is unable to get there, but Redikov's there now after the clear attempt. Oh, okay, I think um, I think Leon was getting me food, so it's all good. Thank you, though. Shinkai plays it in. It's wide. Sure, if you don't mind. I don't even know what kind they have, I can't lie. Yeah, I... Surprise me. Yeah, surprise me. Alright. I'm getting a junior chicken combo too. Love me. Hey. Pardon? W Riz, bro. W Riz. Alright, we return. It appears it's going to be a free kick. Couldn't quite tell what's going on there. Assume it was a foul all over our hand. Oh. Oh, shoot, we got freezies, bro. Look at Ben, bro. Ben's got us freezies, good. Alright. Headed on by Hybrid. The shot is wide by number eight. Ben, you're a legend. Dude, that's sure. Dude, Dykstra has returned to the field. Thank you, sir. He's my favorite, too. W Riz. Yeah. Dude, Dykstra has returned to the field, which is a great sign. Just for everybody. Hate to see an injury in the Sauce Championship. Dirk Breeze plays it up. Hybert with the ball now. Hybert looking to create a chance. Once again, beautiful ball to Ben Brower. That was just at an awkward angle for Ben Brower to play. It's getting late, and the one goal has from, been from a penalty kick. Outer band across the October, no whistle. Seth the Weird. Looking for a chance as good as he had earlier in this match. Ball among the keeper. Right call. He's there. Heritage falls. Well, that would have been a perfect through ball to Brower, but a head is brought to it. Let's see if Armstrong can create something else. All thrown in. Vandercrack, chest to Toba, Shinkai. Ryan Brower has the ball. He's one on one. Oh, and he just can't curl the ball. That was a perfect opportunity. Unlocked it for Ryan Brown. Best chance HD has had in a while. See if they can do more of the same and maybe find the back net here. Yeah. 
Heritage ball. Ball's put into the middle. Dykstra. Otten's running. Apologies, Kemper, not Otten. They're both wearing a headband. Ball thrown in. Debris is there, though. Ivor can't first force the turnover. Ball's going to be crossed in here. Oh, surely. That was not the result they wanted. Almost a second goal opportunity there. Ben Brower. And it looks like Harrison is taking a little bit more of a defensive stance here. As I hear everyone back from the coaching staff. The brief ball. What's going on here? The box doesn't appear crowded, so it's hard to say it's the eighth quarter. Ball's played to the middle. Never mind, Ben Brown, we're still on the side here. Looking to create a chance, and this looks good. Oh, and he trips over the ball, but is able to secure it, play back to the middle. Shakai is in the middle here. The guy plays it to the far side. Beautiful ball to Jonah Heiberg. Can't quite get there, though. Heiberg keeps it in. Beautiful footwork. Frost in. Brower has a head to it. They have an opportunity here. Ryan Brower's in the box. Oh, and he can't quite get a shot off. A golden opportunity. He's tackled. Foul called. Ball's kicked away on the free kick opportunity. It causes a bit of a commotion. But there will be a foul against Zach Armstrong and free kick here for the Heritage Talk. Apologies for my silence. I'm eating a freezy currently. Makes it a bit difficult. But it is quite heat. Hot on this roof. There will be a corner kick here for the Heritage Hawks. They can put one more in. It's been almost certainly put the game to sleep. See what's going on, but it appears that it's actually for all. Apologies for that. Dykstra plays the ball back. Otten. Otten crosses it in. Brower here. Brower plays it through the middle. He's going to go up the sideline to Heidberg. Heidberg tries to get there. Unsuccessful. Great hustle from Heidberg. Ball's played on. Heidbert has it, crosses it in. And it's going to be a corner kick here. Unless Shinkai saves it, he lets it go. Shinkai wants the corner. Puts it in fast. Oh, the ball's chipped. Simke does grab it. But at first, it was just chipped. The ball's thrown deep. It's a one on one here for Duma. Duma feels a one on two. Duma plays it behind. It's now one on one. Just him and Zach Armstrong. 
take it into the corner. Armstrong tries to knock the ball. Armstrong does knock it off the ball. But it's a foul. Free kick right from the corner spot. See what they do with this free kick. And that is all she wrote, folks. The Harrison Hawks, in crazy fashion, after a penalty kick in the first 10 minutes, is conceded. A clean sheet by Simke is more than enough. But the Heritage Hawks to the finals. So our sauce the single A championship finals is set. But the Heritage Hawks taking on the Gino to Brett Christian High Griffin. Heritage jubilant here as they line up at the center line. HD couldn't convert on their chances, unfortunately. But their season not over yet if Heritage is able to secure a championship victory. So that's it for us for now. We'll be back at 2 p.m. For the final. Oh, Griffin. Oh. She just said that.
I just said the bad word on. Oh. I said bad word on Mike. I think the oh, game God. sheets are down there. So I'm gonna go grab them. You do that. Thing that you are like <laughs> As we approach kickoff, the South Single A Championship Finals will have a matchup between Gino Brett Christian High School Griffins wearing blue and the Heritage Hawks wearing white. Get ready for this final matchup. Both teams are in their huddles. Here's the game plan for one last time before getting ready to try to secure that Salsa banner and the qualifications for an offset. Just a quick reminder about the format, it is a double berth for offset qualification, meaning the winner of this game is guaranteed a spot in offset and a Sausage Championship banner. The loser of this game will have another chance tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. to take on the loser of the first round that the championship team was involved in. The winner of that match will also secure themselves an offset. Official take the field. We wait now just for the Griffins. Both of these teams have a clean sheet in the previous matchup. Tremendous defensive effort. The Hawks only put in one goal, however, off of a penalty kick, whereas the Griffins found the back of the net four times. Their 
come the Griffins as we get underway here in this championship final. Sasha St. Clair Boys Docker. Looks like we're going to see the same lineup from the Griffins we saw this morning. Balls from the Hawks in the first round. And thanks a lot of tremendous performance in the first game. Stopping a free kick that was almost destined for the back of the net. But Simkey on the other end for the Heritage Hawks also had a clean sheet in his first matchup. It's really a battle of offense here. See who can break the other team's strong defense first. Reed Vanderwood and Ashton Stratting were everywhere in the first round as we are underway here. The Heritage Hawks, a very strong back in Van Hoydonk and Otten as well. Ball goes to Ben Temple right away, it secures it. The pressure from Heritage early. Falls down the box, jumps to no avail. Duma's in on goal. Shots blocked. Early opportunities here for the Heritage Hawks. As it'll be a corner kick here. Duma had a golden opportunity there, but couldn't quite fire a shot off on net. Great defense there by the Griffin side. Corner kick coming in from the Hawks. Griffins look to clear this immediately. Ball's in play, it's near post, Temple, and it's in and out of his hands, and the overhead volley is missed. Way over the crossbar. Temple couldn't quite hold on to that one. A little bit of a sigh of relief from the Griffin side there, as the Hawks retreat, which to reset for another chance. Vanderwood just takes the goal kick. That ball will have to be retrieved, as it went quite a ways over the fence there. Vanderwood plays the ball up the sideline to the Tillman Harsel. Harsel can't find the ball. Lawson's in on it. Ball controls the ball, plays it backwards. Cameron Borg. That's not the line. Harsel Borg. Harsel up the side to Lansing. Simpkey Borg. Well, now maybe got the jitters out. Lawson up the sideline. Lansing. Lansing in a sea of white here. Plays it back. been a playmaker for this Griffin squad and the ball is played backwards. A little bit of a whip on that ball there for the Heritage Hawks. Simkey's ready for it. Ball is played deep to Reed Vanderwood. It gets a good head on it. However, that ball is controlled by Kemper. No whistle. Bork controls the ball. Lansing's in on it. Kemper with the ball here. There's a call going the other way. Looks like it's going to be a foul. Oh, I think it's to get up there. That will be a free kick for the Griffins, just behind the half field line. Midfield line, rather. Looks like some substitutions are going to come on early. The Griffins in this heat, just over 30 degrees Celsius today. Getting ready. The substitution came back, so Lansing will stay on. We are facing quite a hot day here, as the throw in will go be awarded to the Griffins. Players playing in this heat so far has not affected them, but it is early in the first half. We'll see fitness levels of this these teams as we get into the late game. Dykstra push out of bounds by Blocker. Blocker. It's gonna be Griffin's ball. Stratting with the throw in. It is Silva back to Stratting. Stratting on the sideline, plays it towards the middle. Blocker turns, loots the ball. Doom on it. Vanderwood with the clear. Boss is the recipient of the clear. Boss up the sideline to the Silva. The Silva with the ball brings it to the middle. Lansing wide open on the left wing. The Silva looks at him, but is not able to get it there. Force plays the ball in. Harshward in pursuit. Oh, Harshward pushes over the keeper. That's And he gets a little bit of a talking to from the ref there. No pushing. The rest have been very reluctant to give any cards out today. Need for blatant contact. 
Thomas Moore being the bulky man that he is, be a little bit careful with all those muscles. Might get someone hurt. Thomas Moore controls the goal kick, and it's sent up the wing to Lansing, who cannot control it. Kemper, kept in bounds by Lansing, but Kemper is right on that. The Underwood is not able to keep up with Duma. Oh, he is, rather, as he controls that ball. He's able to keep Duma off of it. Boss tries to control it, no avail, but it's recovered by Jack Vanderlei. Ball's going to be up the side. Arsibor. Arsibor's still up the side. That ball's out. Heritage ball. Still 0 0 here early, early in this first half. Boss in pursuit here. Ben Hoydonk, the lone goal scorer for the Heritage Hawks last game, as Dykstra. Saw him with a scary injury last game, but he was able to recover. Dykstra's going to look to cross it here. The cross is in, and it's cleared out by Blocker. Good clear by Blocker. But the Hawks are still getting a lot of chances. This is something we saw last game as well with the Wings. Lots of first half chances, but the Grimms were able to adjust coming out the first half. And Ben Temple's tremendous for 40 minutes performance was what kept them in that game. And they were able to push ahead. In the second half, we'll see if that's going to be the case here, where it's a second half surge from the Griffins. Who today have been awesome in the second 40 minutes. Stratting fakes a shot there. Yep. Able to control the ball as I'm not able to see the play here. Cameron Bork in the middle. He scored from this spot last game, and he skies that one. Almost broke a window at the Teachers College. No luck, but they need more of that from Cameron Bork as he scored last game for a lot of that. For those of you who weren't watching or do not remember, Cameron Bork took a free kick from probably about 25, 30 yards out. Jack Vanderwood faked it, got the wall up and scattered. Bork on the top right corner. And he was... Bork tries to find the ball there with the head, but no can do. Vanderwood clears it out the sideline. So, Stratting is there. Isaac in pursuit. That ball is going to be clear. It's going to be on the hard support. Hard support looking to go up the wing here. Just work in the middle, Lansing on his left. Plays it to Lansing. Lansing can't control it off an unlucky bounce. Boss is going to throw this ball in. Turns off and throws it in. And Hoydog. The ball rolls along the sideline for a minute before finally going out of bounds. Curtis Ott will throw the ball in once again. We'll see if he takes a little bit of an aggressive roll here. And he throws it forwards, but not too aggressively. Otten with the ball here, plays it towards the middle. DJ Boss with the ball. DJ Boss loses the ball. Ben Hoydonk has the ball controlled here. Ball is right to Boss, but it bounces off his foot. Vanderwood controls it. Jack Vanderwood to Cameron Bork, back to Jack. Vanderwood to Boss. Boss into the middle of the field. Nobody's in it. Reed Vanderwood controls the ball this time near the midfield line. Cameron Bork has the ball, loses control. And John Lansing almost catches Bruining by surprise there. Sorry, Kemper rather, not Bruining. Hurstmark. He was going to throw it in, and then he paused for a second as the ball's camera board bounces bunny out from under his foot. Foul's called. Going to Heritage's way. Free kick for Heritage just past the midfield line. Here comes the kick. And it's in play. Heritage has the ball inside the box. They try to play it forward, but to no avail. Ashton Stratting will clear that. John Lansing tries to get to it, but can't. Kemper on the ball. Lansing picks it off. And then Cameron Bork, fancy footwork, is able to clear it. Cameron Bork's footwork is something to behold. Ball's played up to Lansing. Lansing on the wing. It's a three on four opportunity here for the Griffin. Ball can't be controlled by Noah Hartsmore. Tries to do some kind of scorpion kick idea there. Does not work. That must have been a handball, but no whistle there. And it's another whistle against the Guido Griffin. And it looks like 
We may see a booking here for Robert Walker. No booking. Just a verbal warning. We've seen a boatload of those for this group inside. And they don't, they're not careful. They're probably going to start getting cards. And this is exactly the spot where Cameron Bork scored a free kick in the last uh, the last game. This is a different team. This is going to be a bit of on taking a free kick. And we'll see what they try to do with it. Cameron Bork went right for goal. But when you have a goalie with the quality of Ben Temple, taking a shot from that far may not do you any good. But it looks like he's going to go for it anyway. And it is directly to Ben Temple. That was certainly a low risk shot, but no reward either. No hard support on the ball here. No hard support. One on one with the keeper. No hard support. And he's done it! No hard support has done it again! And the Griffiths take a 1 0 lead in this final. As no hard support finds the top right corner of the net. Kicks on the laces of no hard support. leading score and not even by a close margin as the next best is one goal. Tremendous play from the hard score. And they're gonna give him a quick break it appears. As Lucas Wildeboer is gonna come on, DJ Boss will stay and Noah Wildeboer will also come on. Ryan and Law come on with Cameron Bork as well. Quick breather with the fresh legs. And Hoyt on plays it back to Otter. Up to Kemper. Doesn't make his way through. Loft heads it on to Wildeborn. No Wildeborn. Left side here. He tries to play it in. Gets it to Lucas Wildeborn. We haven't seen a lot of runs from DJ Box so far today. We'll see if that changes here. The one striker has been unable to put a goal in for the Vito Griffin. What's the ball in play? DJ Box is a bit. It goes through his legs and he loses. Ball's played up, and it's going to be an offside call. This is a blind person to not late raise his flag. The uh, Julian Van Hoydong stopped pursuing that ball because he did. Temple plays a deep ball. Lucas Wildeboer with a good little run there to fake out his opponent. No one will plays back to Lucas. Brother duo. That was outside. Oh yeah, those are for you guys. Yeah, they're for you guys. Yeah. I think I already have one. So it would be too good. I just totally forgot. It's gonna be a hand wall. It's gonna be on DJ Boss. Played up to Duma, who ducks. Oh, and Vanderwood knocks over Duma inside the ball. Strategic play for Temple to get his hands on that one. The Griffin's in a good spot here, looking in control. The Heritage pushing. Vanderwood's on that. Vanderwood with the slide tackle. Manages to keep it in play by using his butt. A little bit unorthodox. Here's it. Whatever works, works. On. Plays it up. Kemper. Kemper dodges the defense. Plays it up. Then Hoyt on. Got to look for a cross opportunity here. Now 
looks like a foul was off. Yeah, it's going to be a free kick right to the sideline. More or less similar opportunity for the corner. No real opportunity to directly score off the free kick. We'll see if they're able to play it into the box and make something happen. But Oidon crosses it. It's a short cross. The ball is loose. And it's going to be a goal kick. early in this match. Tremendous strike and finish by Noir support. Put in his third goal of the day. Lucas Wildeboer calls for that one. He has a great touch on it. Great play. Plays it back into Wildeboer. Wildeboer is able to control it. Plays it to DJ Boss. DJ Boss moves the ball a little bit. The ball is played off Ben Hoydonk. Ben Hoydonk is one on one with the keeper. Ben Hoydonk stopped by Ben Temple. Oh, and Benjamin Temple. Another save. Another game. DJ Boss misses that ball. Benjamin Temple. Tremendous performance today. Surely the man of the tournament. Between the duo of Benjamin Temple at the back and Noir at the front, putting holes in the back netting. And tremendous play for the Griffins. Between the ball, came forward, three fans were that's distracted. It's just been a tremendous team effort, the synergy of the squad. Unreal. Jack Vanderwood in the middle. Plays the ball to Ryan Loft. Ryan Loft. Noah Wildeboer wants the ball. Does not get it. Ryan to Silva here. Silva in the corner. Ball is kicked out of bounds. It's going to be a throw for the grip. Throw this to Lucas Wildeboer. Wide open. He cannot control it though. Even Lucas Wildeboer expressed how much he loved the throw. He's a perfect throw. And they're tangled up there. And it's going to be a free kick as... Number 15, Broyden ties up Jack Vanderwood. Jack Vanderwood looks like he's going to take this free kick. It's an angle for him as a lefty that he could get a shot on target. Yeah, Vanderwood as the left footer. Plays it in the box. Perfectly done. DJ Boss cannot get his head to that ball and is a couple meters off, quite frankly. Ball bounces off the hand of... Dykstra, and there's just no whistle. That's that's a remarkable non-call. The ball's deep. Ben Hoydonk is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper again, but that ball bounces right into Ben Temple's hands. No difficulty there for the Guido defense. Ben Hoydonk is looking to score again or draw another penalty even. That's how he found his goal last Played up. Number 11 with it. Zach Boyden gets the ball kicked out, but he does get the throw in. He's got to do it very hastily. Ball's thrown in. Ball's kicked out for a corner as Ashton Stratton takes a bit of a tumble. But he's managing to do the Guido Griffins. A little bit of time to reset their defense. And the Guido Griffin corner defense has been unstoppable today, as has their defense in general. There has been zero conversions off of a corner kick against this Guido team. Their height and athleticism makes it next to impossible. And wow, that ball almost went in off the corner. But Ben Temple pokes it out and then grabs the crossbar on his way down. That was something to behold. We'll try again. We'll see if he'll cross it in or try something a little bit different. Jesse Dykstra is not getting that ball. Dykstra is not getting that ball. Grabs the ball. Temple sends it down in a hurry. Can DJ Boss do something here? DJ Boss loses the ball immediately. And Temple was in a bit of a rush there. But the control uh, drop that can be a little too difficult. And Boss looking to redeem himself here. Be a corner kick. Boss serves this game a corner kick. Okay? 
Ryan DeSilva, both teams get as usual. We'll see if they can convert on this. 2 nothing lead at this stage in the match would be, certainly wouldn't be the end of the match as we're still in the first half of play, but it would be an insurance goal. A little bit of extra passing on to that lead. That's a hope we'll take it. And we will take it because it's on that side. Lucas Bowman did not find the ball. Second injury we see from this heritage side today. Hopefully Hawk will be okay as I showed it earlier. Hate to see it on a, on a stage this big. The biggest stage they've played on all season, unquestionably. For a, a player as key as Curtis Otten. To be on the receiving end of an injury. To be a thing for any player. For any caliber, but for heritage that is certainly a dangerous blow to their defensive line. Number 19 will be his replacement, Nick Snyder. Snyder also has that headband, so we'll see if we can, uh, he can pass down his powers through the headband. DJ Boss, his teammates encouraging him to shoot, and he shoots it, but it rolls right to the keeper. Not much of a challenging shot there for Simke who routinely picks it up. And he sends that one. A lot of power behind that because Reed Vanderwood tries to control it, kicks it up the side. But the speed and pace of Stratting is more than enough to track that ball down. De Silva into Vanderwood in the middle. Up the side to Stratting, who's still at full sprint. Vanderwood in the middle. Ryan Lock has it in the middle. Lots of choices here. Off to Will, the board. Both four looks across it into DJ Boss, but it's stopped. Go to Harsabor, up the side, back to Wildebor. Let's see if Wildebor can cross it in again. No luck from Wildebor. Dykstra's in the middle with the court. Heisinger looking to control the ball and create something for this heritage offense. Number 11 with the ball. That's Broining. And Hoydog plays it beautifully in, and Vanderwood is there, picks the ball off. This Keto defense has just been unbreakable so far today. Not a single goal scored against. And the Keto bench and players desperately calling, look at Noah Wildeboer. It was wide open on the far side, but Ryan gets the off there. Silva the block. DJ Boss there just pushed him off the ball. Number eight, Dykstra, due to Dykstra. Pushing over Ryan Loft, and that's going to be a foul call. Foul call right by the sideline. It looks like some substitution will come on. The leading goal scorer in Sasa, Noah Harsworth, going to come back on. Looking cool, calm, and collected. Composed as ever. But he has, he has a relaxed aggression to him. You can tell he wants that second goal. And the subs will not come on yet. No one will be chasing down that ball in the corner. Seven Kemper. Number 19, Snyder. Back to Kemper, and it's up. Number 10, Juma. Juma tries to keep it in, kicks it on his coach instead. Sub will come in. Oh, it looks like it's actually going to be a water break here. So it is. One nothing lead for the Keto Griffins halfway through this first half. We'll see if the Heritage Talks can bounce back. The second half of the first half. We'll be back in a minute. This is the last championship thing they play soccer finals. Do 
whistled back in. As the second half of the first half will resume, so 60 minutes remaining in this game. Jonah Harrison will throw the ball in as the Griffins look to put together another chance here. 2 0 lead going into the half to be convincing and demoralizing for their opponents. And the Heritage Hawks are looking to bounce back here before it gets out of hand. Lucas Wildeborn, he's going to have at it. And that is over the crossbar, but a decent strike there from Lucas Wildeborn, who has been described to me as a pure striker. Owen Schulten, forgive me, seeing the field for the first time today. Oh, the jersey numbers are different on this sheet. <laughs> We're underway. Owen Schulten running down the wing. Owen, he retains the ball. And Owen Jensen knocked over. Owen Schulten knocked over. Jack Vandal will take this free kick. Trying to find just the right place to put it so it doesn't roll away from him with all the divots in the field. Vanderwood plays it in. Oh, it's so close there. Thomas Janice will almost get the length of that ball, but it's going to be a corner here. Janice will take the corner. He's looking for Noah Hartsport, it looks like. No, Vanderwood will come with a second back. Four! Hartsport, surely! Oh! Just why? Seems like the perfect opportunity for Mbappé to find the back of the net. But Jonah Hurts were unable to do so in that scenario. Okay. Sigh of relief. A little bit of a weight lifted off the shoulders of the Heritage players. Got the ball back in there. But no rest for the weary and no Hurts is still looking for a second goal. No Hurts and as I speak, here comes Hurts in the box. Let's see what they do to contain it. Owen. Beautiful defense there from number 19 out of Heritage. Hartsport plays it in. It's over the keeper's head, but he volleyball spikes it. That was what we would call a bounce in the volleyball world. Pointing. Off the arm of Stratty. Ball played up anyway. Vanderwood plays it with his head. Jack Vanderwood up the side. Not one goal that the Griffins scored may prove to even be the game winner. As we saw last match with a low scoring game as well for the Heritage Hawks. Bork. Bork has a strike. There's Owen Cholton. Oh, and the ball was loose. The Hearts of Bork couldn't put it away. Cameron Bork set up that opportunity perfectly with an absolute cracker of shot. And then Owen Schultz managed to re-stand it, and Simke couldn't control the ball. But it appeared as if Noah Hartsport thought he had control of the ball. Stop playing. Notice too late. Oh, what an unfortunate sequence there for the Edo Griffins, who could have padded their lead there in fashion. Number 16 to court. 
Our support controls it. Kemper on that ball. Oh, and this could be. Oh, this could be the opportunity. And it's in! Oh, Julian Benhoidonk has done it! Ben Hoidonk has done it again! And the battle of the strikers, Ben Hoidonk and Hard Support, has fully commenced as the game. 1 1, Ben Hoidonk slams the ball with authority down on the midfield line. Reed Vanderwood giving a piece of his mind to the linesman. And if he isn't careful, he goes to the fucking. And it was just a brilliant run by Ben Hoidonk to stay behind the defense until just that moment, and then he's gone. The speed and pace and intent of that run was beautiful to score the equalizer for the Heresy Fox. That's chatting now. Looking for revenge right off the kick. But you don't need to be careful to keep calm and close here to not allow a second goal. And we have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. 1 1. This is the first game today where one team does not have a clean sheet. Ben Hoydong to the heart support. Are your supporters so far? Ben Hoydong second of the tournament. Hard support third, and forgive me if there's a mispronunciation on the heritage side. The names are not all that legible on the game team. Ben Temple secures that one. And Temple, who's had a tremendous day, just could not stop that one-on-one. -on -one. And as a keeper, there's only so much you could do in a one-on-one. -on -one. And with Ben Hoidong's expert striking, as we've seen twice today, he would not be denied on that opportunity. If Stratting plays it up the field, and that one is going to be a goal kick. We have ourselves a very hotly contested game in this championship final, Salsa Single A Soccer. And what an exciting game it's been so far. Both teams seem fairly equal, both on paper and in practice as we're watching the game here. I love it when Heritage scores, you get to hear that little air horn walk. Great fan support from both sides here. As the school day comes to a close, the Guido crowd will only grow. And the home field advantage as Duma chases this ball down. Duma gets to the ball. Hard support's on him. Hard support knocks Duma over and the whistle's blown. The Guido team has been unhappy with a lot of these calls. That allowed Ben Hoidong to find the back of the net as this ball's crossed in. Oh, this was past the keeper! Oh, the temple was down, but nobody was able to get a clean shot on target. That could have been a very quick second goal. Ball crossed in again. And it's going to be offside. Oh, and that was a very stressful situation there for the Keto Griffins. The second goal appeared to almost find the back of the net. And a chance squandered there from the Heritage Hawks, who could not quite find the back of the net. Stratton goes to get the ball, but he doesn't come to the ball. And that leaves some room. But Stratton redeems himself there as he's getting grabbed. Yeah, and it's a bit of a late whistle. Strouding had to appeal for that call before it was given to him. It's unfortunate. Vanderwood will take this goal, or free kick rather. Play deep. No hard support chasing down this ball. But heritage and total control here. Oh, the ball passed off. Broining, or sorry, Heisinga rather. Fairly smart to play it off of Harsworth's foot. Harsworth needs another now. The Griffins' number one goal scorer. The Griffins are missing one of their goal scorers. Joel Leicher is competing in the track Sasa. Best of luck to him. Off foot. It's an officer regional. That is Sasa. Officer regional. Sasa is a regional for a But they missed some goal scoring from him. Cameron Bork has had a couple good cracks with the net. We'll see if he can throw it. Boy Donk has a man on, but he's able to put it deep. Fairly nice clear there. As Strouding plays it out to Vanderwood. Bork is going to take this. Vanderwood in the middle. A truly dynamic duo with that midfield. And the ball cannot be controlled by Jansima. They're going to take their time throwing this ball in. They throw it deep. It goes right to Joe Park. Reed Vanderwood plays it through the middle. Ball stopped. 
Walker plays it backwards accidentally. And Duma, or not Duma, forgive me. Cameron Ivama. I believe that's what it says. I can't truthfully see on this sheet. Substitutions are going to come in for Guido. Last time the Fresh Lakes came on, there was a bit of a miscommunication when it came to the defensive end of things, and that's how Ben Hoydonk was able to surge past the defensive line and get himself a goal. As this game is one to one, we are approaching halftime. Game 2.32, kickoff was at 2, so we are approaching the halftime mark. Vanderwood will kick it deep. You see Jackson connect on for the first time this game. That was not exactly where he wanted to kick that ball, I would imagine. Number 14 for Heritage. He's going to play it back. Joining Heisinga with the ball. Cameron Bork plays it deep. Jansima's is running. Oh, and Jansima rolls an easy one to Simke, the keeper. Simke elects to throw it this time instead of touching it with his laces. And one thing we've noticed from Simke today is he has a lot of power behind that leg. He can pretty much send the ball into the opposing team's box if he wants to. At will. Reed Vanderwood of Keith Griffin. Ball's into Ryan Silva. Beautifully orchestrated by Vanderwood, but they can't hold on to it. And that ball's put really deep, but that's just trying to get that to it. No problem with that ball. I think that's going to be a pursuit. Just put a little bit of pressure on him. Ball's put deep. A little bit of body contact between Connect and number 11 there. Oh, Noah Hurstport's on. The pace. Oh, and the ball was taken away. He didn't want to cross it to his teammate there. Maybe a bit of a lack of trust in DJ Boston's finishing ability. Connects. Connects with a beautiful move, but he's not able to cross it in. It looks like number 16 for the Hawks. They control the ball. And it's going to be a throw-in for the Guido Griffins. And that ball could have found the top corner. If Simke was not paying attention, but he was, and he's able to get the ball out. Here's Duma, man on Duma. But Duma's able to secure it anyway. He's getting a little bit of body contact there from number 15. Showing a hard support. Number 13, rather. Robert Blocker with the ball. Blocker looking to create, and he turns the ball over in a very dangerous spot. He's able to recover. De Silva. Plays it off the right side of the field. There's nobody there to get it, but Harsavort can hop the suit. Harsavort's going to get there. Harsavort livid about no whistle on that play. Number 14. Here he goes. And he gets kicked, what appears to be in the midsection. He's kicked in the midsection in a free kick in a very dangerous spot that Reed Vanderwood concedes. This is the third free kick that Reed Vanderwood has conceded today, just outside the box. I wonder if he'll have a talk with Coach about some discipline around the box. Because he's put his team in some very dangerous situations here. Ben Hoydonk is going to take it. This spot by Temple made a miraculous save on his far post. We'll see if Ben Temple has to do more of the same. But number 11 here for uh, Zach Bruining appears unmarked. He's wide open. Uh, ball is not going to play there for him. Head to it. Do it to Dykstra. Plays it in. It's off the head of Bork. Noah Harsavort. Bit of a weird bounce in the grass there, but he's able to clear it. Give his team some time to breathe. It is 1 1 here still. This this game is anybody's. Ball's playing in. Jackson connects. He's taken out. And that will be a whistle going Guido's way this time. And without Guido reaction to that one, you think it's the first whistle they got all game, which it may have been. But it's a part of Guido's identity as a team. They play fairly physical, so they have to expect to get more whistles. It's not inherently a bad thing. Vanderwood will take the free kick here, so his offense will push up. Vanderwood asking for yards, as Dykstra was standing a little bit close to the free kick on that one. 
Vanderwood plays it in high and deep. He probably didn't need yards on that one. Boss, one on one with the keeper. Boss heads it to the side and falls to the ground. A squandered attempt by DJ Boss. However, it is cleared up the sideline and Griffin overtakes that. Ashton Stratting and Cameron Bork are going to be substituted. Lucas Wildeboer and Jack Vanderwood will see the field. Blocker throws it to Lanton. Lanton. Jack Vanderwood. DJ Boss. Ball. Lanting is fighting for it. Lanting's fighting hard, but he can't get it. And it looks like that's the halftime whistle. And we, folks, have ourselves a game. It is one to one after 40 minutes of action. Ben Hoydonk put one in the back of the net towards the end of the second half for the Heritage Hawks. And Noah Harsevoort added his third of the day, finding the back of the net very early in this first half. Tremendous play all around, but these last 40 minutes will determine an officer qualification as the Heritage Hawks for Kino Griffin. And obviously, most importantly, a sausage championship. Back in a minute, 1 1, Hawks, Griffin.
And we back. And we back. DJ Fox kicking off the second half. Pop. Wow, that's bad. Pop for the Gibbon 15. Scores 1 1. Nice work. But I'm going to scores. Anyone finding the back netting in the second half of play. And here, here is it comes. Physical battle with the box. And it's a penalty. Oh, never mind. A free kick. It went down in the box, but the goal was outside the box. But Owen Dollar will take this kick. The prolific goal scorer in this tournament, the second highest score. And the Griffins in an uproar about that call. Four man wall. See what the Hoydon can do. He's going to take it. Plays it in a short. Oh, it was a wide open opportunity. He just couldn't control it. Controls it, he's gonna go up the side to Hordyke. Shrouding will take it rather. Hordyke running up the side. Fox will go after that ball. It's a funny for the Hawks. Looks to control it, and that's strike. Hordyke will take this throw in. Hordyke throws it in, and that one bounces off the leg. Uh, Wildeboer, I believe. in these situations because of their height. A lot easier to get ahead to the ball when you're 6'5", as opposed to 5'10". It's a simple math. That's what I put his player. He's fairly good in these spots. And Ryan De Silva has that one on. Guess my height comment was probably not necessary for that one then. Ball is played up. Vanderwood stops it. Reed Vanderwood, a very strong defensive player. Cameron Bourne. Cameron Bourne plays it into DJ Boss. DJ Boss is wide open on that. He crosses it in, but it's over the head of Lucas Voldemort. What appeared to be a good cross was just too high. Vanderwood in the box. Cameron Bourne has at it. Oh, and it's cleared. That shot was on target, but it was right to the goalie and the defender. And then now the ball is back at the midfield. Kept in play by Vanderwood. Pressured fairly well. Robert Blocker plays the ball to Reed Vanderwood. Vanderwood with the ball. Vanderwood looking to attack. Vanderwood slices through the middle. He's going to play it up. Plays the ball to Wildeborn, but it's just long. Maybe he was looking for a through ball for Hordyke. Never know because it never found its intended target. Ball to Hordyke. Hordyke's on the wing. Hordyke looking to cross the ball. He crosses it in. It's deep cross just over the crossbar. Right idea attacking there. Stimke, kick us off here from the goal kick line. Sorry, I don't play soccer. Forgive Simke plays it deep, it's over DJ Boss's head. He did a little bit of a bunny hop to try to get to that one. Go to hard support. Oh, and Cameron Bork is taken out from behind. He's lying low on the grass for a minute there. Maybe soaking up some of the natural grass. Maybe it's a bit colder than the temperature out here. Who knows? Spent a while getting up there. Vanderwood will take this free kick. As usual, he's great at setting up chances from these positions. Vanderwood gets it into the box. It's a beautifully put ball. Superbork outside the box. He's going to have at it. Oh, and Simke gets on his knees and takes that ball. Simke's been great on his knees so far. Vanderwood has the ball. 
Walker is looking to play to Vanderbilt, but plays it all the way up the wing to Hartsport instead. Silva's open on the wing. Let's see if Hartsport goes there with it. Hartsport follows his own ball instead. De Silva looking to help him out, and De Silva does. De Silva's in front. Oh, and he can't quite get there, but he may be finding a corner. Oh, but the ball's kept in play. DJ Boss is there, however, to pick up that ball. Plays to De Silva, has to score it back, but he does not run his route. The ball is maybe a bit far from De Silva. Sam Key will get a goal kick. And there's going to be substitutions coming in here. Will DeBoer and Owen Schulten. And the Guido crowd is growing and growing as we approach the end of the school day. Just what the Griffins want and need. So desperately in late game when energy is low. And the heat and humidity of this fine afternoon is sucking the energy out of the players. You can just see it. Simke plays it deep. The runs are a bit slower. The kicks are a bit softer. It's it's all about mental toughness at this stage of the game. Reed Vanderwood plays it deep. That was almost definitely a handball because it touched the hand. And so it'll just be a goal kick for Reed Vanderwood, pretty much where he kicked the ball initially. Vanderwood plays it deep. It looks like it might have made its way all the way to the hill, but it was intended for Hort. Arsenal chasing this ball down. Arsenal turning. Oh, and he slips, turns the ball over as Duma, Jesse Duma is pushed to the ground. And, that, and that's, unfortunately, it's seemingly the right call. But this is the difficulty that you have when you have a team that's full of tall, strong players. You're playing against people that are five inches shorter and you know, a few pounds lighter. You have to exercise a degree of carefulness, caution. You will get called for things like that. As Walker puts it straight up, Archibald's there, and it bounces off his arm. A slight complaint there from Harrison. It bounces off the arm so Harrison It was in line with his body. Owen Schultens is there. Owen Schultens! Schultens! Oh, and the offside flag is up. So even if he did find the back of the net, it would have been pulled back. Owen Schultz almost with a tremendous opportunity there, but he's called outside. Simke's going to kick the ball. <laughs> the official trying to tell Simke where to kick the ball from, but he's quite confused. It looks like they've got it figured out now. The Hoy is going to kick this ball. Kicks it deep. It's going to be chased down over Hartsport's head. Is that better? Oh, okay. De Silva here. Up the wing. Schultens. Bork in the middle. Oh, and he can't quite control that one. A rare mistake with the feet from Bork. But he's able to recover it here with the help of Harsimore. Reed Vanderwood in the middle, looking to make something happen. Swings it to the far side. Stratting. Stratting's there. He looks to play it up the wing. He's getting bumped a little bit by Heisinger. Stratting's going to play it up the wing here. Noah Wildeboer. This is a spot that he likes to be in as he crosses the ball, but it gets deflected. And it's recovered by the Hawks, but they put it out of bounds. And Gino is fully on the offensive right now. As Stratting will look to throw this ball in. It's been a while since we've seen a chance for the Hawks. And this is a similar team to what we saw last game. Last game, it was pretty much in the first half with Gino Griffin still in place. Then they managed to shut down the links of so far, the Hawks have not had many opportunities on the offensive end. Now we're just waiting for the offensive outburst that we saw against Brebeuf, perpetuated by Guido. Arsenal recovers this ball. He's in a good spot here. He's got a lot of the field to work with. It's played up the wing to De Silva. De Silva here. Oh, De Silva. He's weaving through the whole team. Cameron Ibama is in pursuit here of Robert Blocker. Robert Blocker plays it to Vanderwood. Vanderwood is doing the same for Vanderwood as he plays it to Vanderwood, one of the most reliable players on the field right now from that center back position. Also the captain of this Guido team. There is no indication, but because there's no armband, but we, we all know in our hearts. Ash is trying to keep it in play, but he puts it right to Ibama. It's put right to Vanderwood's head. Who has no fear sticking his forehead down on that one? Ball 
Ball's out the side. Griffin's ball. There's going to be a few substitutions coming on for the Heritage Hawks sometime soon. Ashley Stratton with the throw, and it's headed out of bounds. That was certainly not the game plan there. Those are the type of errors that can cost a team a game this late, and that's that's what happens late in games, right? Get tired. themselves in front here in this deadlocked 1-1 one, one game. We are not even halfway through the second half yet. There's lots of time for anything to happen. I'm sweating up a storm. I can't imagine what this play. But as long as I know that it's a process and keep it off the bench out. Maybe not. He has to flick it around a little bit, juggle it. He learned juggling in kinesiology class. I'm sure it came in handy. Foot deep, not controlled. Lansing puts it in the middle. Schulten's back to Lansing. Lansing chases it down. The legs on that man. Balls into Lansing. Put out the side. Lansing is gonna hand it off to Hartsaboard, I'm sure, for the throw in. Hartsabor inbounds the ball, and it's out off Will the ball. It's going to be Heritage football. Ball's put in. Lucas Will the looking to make something happen. He turns on the ball. Cameron Bork fakes a bit of a shot there. Vanderwood, ball's dropped off to Hartsabor. Up the wing to Lansing. You know, looking to systematically create a chance here. Falls behind Vanderwood, but Vanderwood's got it, and then Cam falls. Cameron Bork falls on his back there, but Vanderwood waits to draw the offense, the pressure, and then he passes the ball off, making things easier for his teammates. Trademark of a good captain. Ball's taken away. Heritage, a bit of a miscue there. You can hear them screaming out as they're trying to put the ball out of play, but a little bit of miscommunication between 20 and 21 there. I actually don't have a name for player number 21, which is kind of unfortunate. Cameron Bork! Oh, and an absolute cracker of a shot. And the save by Stimke. Tremendous. Oh, and that could have been the go ahead goal. Cameron Bork, an absolute beauty, but the save, unreal. And that's, that's an opportunity for Cameron Bork. You just wish you could have converted on nothing, nothing different than you could have done there. It was a beautiful shot. Got it right to the side netting almost. And Wildebor recovers it. They're still attacking here. And that ball proves them to not be attacking. As the goal kick is awarded. And they kick it a whole goal post over from where they were aiming. But the chances for Guido have been very, very promising so far. As it appears, Jude Jans will check in here for Jack Vanderwood. Can't quite recognize the other sub from here. Vanderwood. Oh, it's Miles. And will check in as well. First time we see him today. Ball's put Hofsink wasn't actually here for the first game, and that ball climbs on the roof with us. Yeah, Hofsink, I believe, was competing in track today as well. We may see Albert Lansing make an appearance in the second half as well. We're not sure. Don't think he's here yet. But he's a member of this Guido Griffin's team who's unable to make it because of track. Here. He has finished his event. Noah Will the board chasing. Ashton Shrouding will control the ball. And it seems the Hawks are fully on the defensive here. Something I'm sure was not their plan coming out of the half. And they can try to clear it up, but maybe trying to clear it up the line. Ashton Shrouding plays it backwards. Blocker controls. 
Number five for the Hawks was attempting to play that ball. I also don't have a number five, so not sure why my roster is not uh, it's not fully updated, but bear with me. Cameron Bork plays the ball in towards the middle. Stratting will chase it down. Stratting past the defender, looking to create a chance. Stratting into the box. Ball's played up and it's cleared out the sideline. But Noah Wildeborn may secure it. Played back a little bit, but Kilo still comfortably in control of this ball. Oh, but now it's turned over. And it's a one on one. Reed Vanderwood looking to get a shot. And he died. I almost flew away. I was Two jams at the ball. And Reed Vanderwood saved a one on one with the keeper there. Cameron Bork. Takes a pass, plays it through the middle. Lucas Wildeborg. Wildeborg cannot control it. But the other Wildeborg can, and he takes it up the wing. It's put into the ball. Easy grab for Sinky. And Simkey telling his team to get down the field, and then he doesn't make super solid contact. Lanting kicks it off the defender. Lanting go for four. Four in the middle. Four plays it up. Lanting will chase it down, but I'm sure he'll get there. He was almost like a bit of an odd bounce, a little bit of a hill there. Jans can't control that one. Everything's going the other way. Down the middle. And Walker controls it. You very rarely see the midfield one chance just a second to go from the Heritage Hawks. But so far, always been in Heritage Den. Two Jans can't quite stretch to get that one. Wildeboard's got it. Wildeboard lays it off for Jans who can't get there in time. Wildeboard falls a little bit. Jans coming in to help. No avail. Oh, and Robert Blocker. He slows down a little bit, gets his heel to that ball to break up that chance. Tremendous awareness, and that could be an offside, but it's not. But a great overhead kick there from Ashley's traffic to break up that chance. It seems like every chance the Hawks have a chance at creating gets broken up fairly quickly. Vanderwood has it, which is almost guaranteed clear. But oh, he wipes out! Oh, and he wipes out number five. That's a fun game. That's a little bit of breath in the lungs of Heritage, who up until that point had no chances and truly not a great decision to give Heritage a free kick and a little bit of a break in the momentum. So Jonah Harsavor will sub on for Reed Vanderwood, who will see the bench for the first time today. A huge blow here for this Guido team. Because Vanderwood is an absolute rock on defense. But just a poor play, which will result in a free kick and maybe turn the tide of this match. Ben Hoydonk plays the ball in. No Reed Vanderwood here. And the ball is stuck in. It's still in the middle. They can't clear it because there's just too many bodies in Jude Jans with a successful clear. There was just a lot of bodies. Had no time to wind up. Miles Hobson keeps it in bounds. Wipes out a little bit. The ball's in the middle and nobody's going for it. That would have been a ball Reed Vanderbilt would have taken with no hesitation. It's just a bit of a hole now for a team that's still used to Reed Vanderwood being in the game. West Broining. That's going to be a handball. Griffin's unhappy with the officiating this game, and they're definitely being vocal about it. Ben Hoydonk. It's in the box. Judah Dykstra is outside the box. Looks to control the ball here. Plays it off the back of Noah Wildeboer. Owen Schulten plays it to Noah Wildeboer. No Will DeBoer is outnumbered, but he's still going. And he gets knocked off the ball there. A few elbows being thrown. A couple trips too, maybe, but no whistle. 
Bones play it up. Bork controls it. Bork looking to make something happen. Plays it up the side. Owen Schultens gets an angle on it. Plays it into the middle. Lucas Wilde can't quite get to that one. John Lansing. Number five, he's playing it up. But I do not have an anchor. That is unfortunate. A little bit of commotion there. A couple bodies hit the ground. I was going to take on the side. Up to John Lansing. John Lansing here. He's knocked off the ball. It's going to be played up the side. Now into the middle. And Bork controls a bit of a miscommunication between Bork and Jan. It's going to be striding here against Ibama. Ashton striding clears it beautifully. They're not able to control it. And Hoydonk plays it up to the side. That's offside almost certainly. And shortly it is. And a water break is called. As we approach towards the end of the second half, and we're still in a 1 1 deadlock. Not much time remaining here, maybe 10 or so minutes, uh, more like 10 to 20. But as we head out for this water break, it is 1 to 1. Julian Van Hoydonk and Noah Harsworth are your scorers. I haven't seen Noah Harsworth on the field for a while, but we'll be back in a minute. Looking energized, looking to put one more away as to avoid extra time. But a reminder that any a goal at any point in this game now could pretty much clinch a solid championship for either of these teams. Game of all acquaintance for solid championships is add another. Over the last 10 years, you know, certainly no stranger to bringing home a salsa banner, and much less a salsa banner. It's something that. You know, soccer program is the reason why they were inducted into the Hamilton Soccer Hall of Fame. Their success despite being such a small school, but they have to draw this. Looking to break the norm here. Massive substitutions for both squads coming in after this water break. Underway. And the substitutions for the Guido Merchants include Reed Pamperwich and Noah Harsavor. Heritage Park, I'm delaying the substitution as long as possible. But it looks like they may come in now. And the free kick will commence. No substitutions. Ashton Stratting will take the free kick. Stratting plays it in. Oh, that's a high ball. Almost looked like he was on target at first. Looks like a good down for the day. But no luck. Substitutions are in. Strouding will take a seat. As will many others. It looks like Wildeboer, Harsevoort, Jans, second Wildeboer, and Schultens will all take a seat. As DJ Boss, Noah Harsevoort, Reed Vanderwood, Ryan Loft, Jack Vanderwood, and Ryan De Silva will all come on. I believe that is all the substitutions. Ito made a lot of substitutions for his heritage, only made three. And that goal kick goes directly to John Lantic, certainly not the objective. Ball's played into Ryan Loft. Ryan Loft into Boss. Boss here. Boss plays it back to Vanderwood. Vanderwood to Law. Loft looks uncertain what to do with it, and that 
Split second of hesitation throws the ball away, but Jackson connects. Will follow up for that ball. Hartsonboard plays it to the side. Hartsonboard will want it back, I'm sure. Ryan De Silva trips over the line first, and it appears. He plays it in, and he catches the tree. One one still as we approach the end of the second half. We'll see if there is a last second winner for this soft to championship or if we'll need some extra time outside of regulation to determine who our champion is. Simke. Goal kick is good. But it still goes, falls into the feet. Edo Griffin. The last two kicks have turned over possession. That would be concern. Loft. Loft might have at it here. And Loft has at it. And it bounces out of Simke's hands. Parts of we're almost there to pick it up. But just a split second too late or Simke is a split second too fast. You make the determination. Simke plays it into the middle once again to the Griffin. And it doesn't look like these drop kicks are actually intended to go to Heritage as Miles Hofstein falls over trying to play that ball. He's going to play it up the middle. Ryan Loft here had a tremendous shot just the last drive. I think he can take full side. He turns a little bit. Plays it into the middle. It's clear. Oh, and they can't control it. Ben Hoedonk is not able to control that ball. It's something that Heritage has really been struggling with right now. Controlling the ball at the midfield. And they haven't been able to create chances in the direct result. And when you're not creating chances against the keeper of a quality of that tempo, you need chances. Because the few chances you get may not find the back of the net. Especially if Temple's in the form that he has been in today. Just tremendous play. They weren't expecting that. The Heritage defense just slowed down on the balls. Looks like DJ Boss just stopped the ball in an attempt to have a shot right in front of the net. Just him and the keeper just trapped the ball and, and it gets kicked out for a corner. Maybe he elected that the corner was the better day, better option there. Not a great angle for me to make that determination. Vanderwood, corner. Corner high into the box. Vanderwood gets ahead to it. Noah Hartsford turning on it. Oh! And Hartsford almost managed to turn on that ball. And Dumas, off pursuit of Robert Blocker. Robert Blocker turns, no problem for him. De Silva. De Silva plays it into the middle, it's picked off. Connects can't get it back, but Jack Vanderwood can. Vanderwood knocked over, no, oh, and there is a whistle. Vanderwood holding his leg. It appears that he will be okay, though. He's just holding the spot for the referee to know where the goal, or the free kick is. Admirable. Jack Vanderwood plays it in, and that one's over the crossbar. What could have been a dangerous shot, Jack Vanderwood, known to, and known for the power behind that leg. Just a little bit too much on that one. Not sure he ate for breakfast. Maybe one less bite, and he would have found the top corner. Sim Key will now have at it. And the Heritage coach is encouraging them. And it, it seems like Heritage has come to this game with an underdog mentality. Regardless of who is and who isn't an underdog, Heritage has been fighting for everything. But they're struggling late here, and maybe it's fatigue, and this this is a difference in strategy we've seen from the two coaches. Coach Will DeBoer has certainly used his fresh legs to kept things rotating through, almost like hockey shifts. And Coach Van Hoydog has treated it more like keep the, keep the first 11 on with a few swaps here and there. So I wonder if this fatigue will get to his guys and cause some late game errors. Or if they'll be able to achieve a level of cohesion. Wouldn't be possible. We'll see. It's, it's certainly a different strategy. Ryan Law puts the ball in the middle. Ryan Law plays it up for Noah Harsabor, but it just doesn't quite get through. Ball's played up by number eight. They haven't seen too much to do to Dykstra here. Jackson Connect gets ahead to it, but if he didn't get ahead to that one, that could have been a dangerous spot. Arsenal or Vanderwood, forgive me, plays it up. De Silva can't control it though. Ryan De Silva will throw this ball in. De Silva, beautiful cross. 
Nobody can receive it though. Vanderwood controls it in the middle. Vanderwood the blocker. Jesse Duma and Dykstra on him. Oh, not Dykstra. Forgive me, Ibama. Ibama's playing up front. And the keeper calls for that ball and he takes it. Simke. Simke having a tremendous game as well. That one goal was tough at the beginning and that ball spun its way out of bounds. Simke frustrated with himself after that. Substitution waiting on the side for the Heritage Talks as well. Lancet plays it into the middle. DJ Boss doesn't come to the ball. Jesse Duma knocked off the ball by Miles Hodgson and the whistle is blown. The Griff's complaining once again about a call, which appeared to be the correct call. Some of the players look at a little bit sunburnt. I mean, particularly look at the goalie, Ben Temple. He is red as a tomato right now. And sure, that may be a little bit off topic. As the White Hawk controls the ball in the midfield. Lansing, ball's turned over. Lansing streaking down the side. And that's something Lansing strikes into the middle. The whistle is not blown. Noah Harsimor with the opportunity for a second goal. Oh, and it's over the crossbar. Noah Harsimor. Oh, in shambles. As Harsavor had a golden opportunity, putting his fourth of the tournament and second of the game. Oh, and what a squandered opportunity there from the Griffins. They could have gone up 2 1 late in the second half, and surely that would have been the game winner. As some substitutions come on, here's the fresh leg strategy Ryan Loft, Jackson Connect, and DJ Boss will all come off. Go to Harsavor, Cameron Bork. Ash and Stratting will all see the field here. Cameron Bork with the goal earlier. We'll see if he can do more of the same. The scoring pedigree of this Griffins lineup that's on the field here. They've seen success earlier in this tournament. No reason why they couldn't see it now. Number eight, Robert Parker. Plays the ball to the side to Brian De Silva. Ash and Stratting with the ball. Can't quite control it, but he's going to loop back and he's going to handle it. Ben is all Ben Heisinger gets the ball out of bounds. Hawks pushing here, trying to get the ball in their opponent's zone. And here they go. They're gonna play it up the far side. Ben Hoydong looking to make a play on the ball. It's Kemper. Kemper now will have the ball in the corner. I cannot see. wanted that one you could see he was laser focused tunnel vision on that ball it was one number 11 with four white jerseys and he pushed his way to get that one-on-one -on -one. will the board put it back to Bork Bork is dangerous in this spot we know that Ryan De Silva here Silva plays it back to Bork Bork at the head of the offense here and Bork is taken out that is surely a whistle Ben Hoydonk getting a little bit of a warning here. Both captains have had a talking to with Reed Vanderwood getting that yellow card. And now Vanderwood has to be extremely careful. The loss of Vanderwood at this stage in the game, particularly going into extra time, could prove very dangerous. Ben Temple trying to watch the game with the glare of the sun getting in the way. Or the stress. One of the two as his hands are on his head. It puts Stimke with his arms out as he has to play some defense right now. The ball's played in. Kemper. Kemper puts it out the side. Nolan Kemper has been a strong defender today for this Heritage Talk side. Both of these teams have only allowed one goal all day. And it has been to each other. Ball's thrown in. Kemper kicks it backwards. It's going to be another throw in for Harsimor. Our sword's going to throw it in. He's looking for Lucas Wildeboer. Lucas Wildeboer peered offside to me. It's going to be a corner kick. Cameron Bork will take this. That's switching things up. For, per usual, it's Brian De Silva 
Take your things from the right side and Jack Vanderwood from the left. <clears throat> Although De Silva at the top of the box here. Let's see what Bork can do. Crosses it in. Ball's in the middle. Vanderwood. Oh, and it's cleared out. Vanderwood couldn't put enough on that header. De Silva puts it in. Oh, and he's going up the field now. He's got plenty of room to work with. He's in the middle. Brings it to the middle. It's a through ball. And surely Duma's off high. But it does not matter because he does not catch the ball. It's hard to has it up the side. He plays it through the legs of Kemper. It's put out of bounds by Otten. And Otten makes his return after seeing an early leg injury. This is huge for this heritage side. I didn't even notice that he substituted on. But Otten was a huge piece of that heritage defense in that first game. But a clean sheet was secured, and there's going to be an offside whistle against the Guido de Bred Griffins. Four minutes. Four minutes? Four minutes remaining in this half before we see the end of regulation. And it is a one to one ball game here. Both teams frantically trying to put one in, but not trying to give too much room for their opponent to do the same. It's a mix between aggression and caution as both teams try to find the back of the net. Otten with a beautiful play. And he's up the sideline. Kemper has the ball. Kemper and Robert Blocker. Ben Temple easily secures that ball. Ben Temple doesn't break a sweat, even though I'm sure he has broken a sweat. Today's 30 degree day. Ball's played up. Vanderwood in the middle. Vanderwood will secure it. Played to Kramer Bork. Is about the midfield line. Cameron Bork looking up the side of the field to Ryan Silva, but he decides to take it himself. Bork with the fancy footwork, doesn't manage to keep the ball. Bork with the standing tackle attempt failed. Heritage looking for one to push here for the last four minutes. As Heisinger turns on the ball, puts it to the hands of Travis. De Silva trying to keep the ball in place, definitely does. Silva plays it deep. No hard support. Looking for its fourth goal of the competition in what would be heroic fashion late in this game. Heritage calling for a handball, but no whistle. Hard support chases it down. And once again, we get to see the pace of hard support. No hard support. Ball gets taken away. Cameron Bork. Bork's going to play it to the other side to Jonah Hard Support. They're stretching the Heritage defense thin here. Hard Support plays it in. Looked like a shot attempt that was just wide. There's going to be substitutions. Looks like they're bringing in DJ Boss for Cameron Bork. Maybe an attempt at more goal scoring, but Boss has not been successful at finding the back of the net today as a striker, whereas Bork has. So De Silva will come off as well as Cameron Bork. So they're taking off playmaking. And they're bringing in Loft and Boss. Maybe as an attempt, get some more shots on target in this game. So there's surely not much time left in this half. here up against Vanderwood. Vanderwood successfully clears it. Oh, and the ball. Noah hurts the board. He has a run at it, but no lock. Oh, and this could be an opportunity as blockers on the ball. Vanderwood clears it. And the Griffin successfully squashed that one. And now both teams are playing long, playing the ball deep. Will the board tries to get through the defense, but it's secured. Eisen gets there on the ball against Stratty. Both teams lobbing it deep. And this is an opportunity here. He's going to try to play towards the middle. And it looked like he wanted a penalty opportunity there. The referee is not going to pull the whistle unless it's blatantly obvious this late in the game. It's 
fairly unlikely for the referees to try to decide the game by calling a penalty unless it is truly, truly prevalent. Aspen Strouding will secure this ball. Dykstra in hot pursuit. Dykstra's going to close out on Blocker. Blocker plays it back to Strouding. Strouding into the middle. DJ Boss kicks it off of Ben Heisinger. It's going to be a substitution. Noah Wildeborg. Going to make one final push here. Is full time, ladies and gentlemen. We have ourselves an extra time situation. One one. Okito and Aaron did score the first half of this matchup. Second half was a whole lot. Save chances, missed opportunities. We'll be back in a minute for extra time. I don't even know if it's extra time or two minutes, to be honest with you. Professional soccer, it's one third of a regular period. So one third of a 40 minute period would be like 15 minutes. So I don't know. Yeah, just, yeah normally they do two 15 minute periods. Right? I, don't know, I, don't know I, don't I, I don't know what the salsa rule is. I think there's extra time for it, but I don't know if it's one or two periods and how long it is. But we're about to find out. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm sure somebody knows down there. I, just, I don't do soccer. The shootout would not be good for you. I think, well, that's the thing, right? Like, we have a really, really strong goalie. It's our defense that's so strong, right? He's got to be careful for not getting another yellow in this half, otherwise he's in big trouble. Yeah. Because, say, hypothetically, he gets another yellow and then they lose, he's not allowed to play in the contest. So, I guess if he gets a yellow in the next game, too, he might have too many yellows in the closet, which means he can suspend him for the first game of the too, but... We're going to get underway here in an extra time period. Sauce and single A boys soccer championship final. Extra time. It doesn't get better than this. This is exactly what they have trained for all season long, all year long. For this moment, a chance at an officer championship, or sauce the championship rather, and officer qualification. Here on the Guido Field, one team will walk away victorious, and one team will return tomorrow morning at 9 to play a challenge match. As a player, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but I'm going to look there for you guys. That's what you can see. Some of the gifts of nature. <laughs> When duty calls, duty calls. And we'll see if duty includes finding the back of the net, not just finding the back of the bushes. 
<laughs> and here we go. Extra time. Salsa single A boys soccer championship. We're underway. Just so you guys know, the mic can hear literally everything. What? The mic can hear literally everything. But I don't say the end of Heritage will kick off here. This first period of extra time. Ben Temple taking his spot in the net. He's been tremendous today, as we've said many, many times. But he needs another goal. And with the likes of Noah Harsavort on the field, looks like it might just happen. Kim Van Hoydonk put one in first, though. We're about to see. Harsavort plays it deep. Otten plays it up. Kemper with the ball now on the sideline. Kemper, he's trying to outpace Bork. Bork puts it out of bounds. Kemper looks to throw it in quickly. Gives it off to Otten. Or attempts to give it off to Otten, who does not follow. Otten throws the ball in deep. Number 10 now. Jesse Duma has the ball. Jesse Duma crosses the ball. And a tremendous opportunity there. Duma with a decent cross. But nobody can find the end of it. Ball is put up to DJ Boss, who does not come to the ball. The ball is taken by the Hawks defense. They're going to play it up the sideline here. And Hoy and Hoydonk, unable to create a chance there. Ben Hoydonk steals the ball and he's pushed. Oh, and frustration from Jack Vanderwood. Heritage just had so many free kicks from outside the box. And almost that penalty awarded. If that penalty was awarded, we could not be here right now. As Heritage could be walking away with this loss of Banner. But here we go. Ben Hoydonk will take this kick. Noah Hurstworth waiting for a counterattack standing near the midfield line. Ben Hoydonk approaches. Free kick. It's in the box. Oh! And they had at it. Ben Heising, I believe, so close. But plays it upwards. It's a bit oh, tremendous opportunity for Heritage to take the lead. I don't believe it's sudden death. Marie Vanderwood will take the goal kick here, as always. Vanderwood plays it deep. I'm not sure if the ball is intended for, but it made its way to Cameron Bork. Bork plays up the side to Lantic. Lantic's in space here. Lantic takes across it with his left ball. That's a tough opportunity for Lantic. Looks like he may have slipped, didn't quite get under the ball the way he wanted. Ball goes past blocker, but Stratting will control it. Duma's in hot pursuit here. Doesn't work Stratting, but he does play it out the sideline. Zach Broining. Plays it to Van, Van Hoydong, who plays it back to Broining. Van Hoydong. Van Hoydong plays it in. Blocker's able to control it to Vanderwood. Vanderwood's going to play it up the wing. Lansing will have the ball on the sideline. Lansing back in the middle. No teammate there for him to play it to, but they pass it right back to Jack Vanderwood anyway. Boss trying to control the ball here. Boss has it. He loses the ball, and that's something that Boss has struggled with outside of the 18-yard box so far today. Holding on to the ball and being able to convert it into an opportunity. Number 15, Heisinga. Heisinga with the through ball. Duma's there. Oh, and Vanderwood with Duma with an opportunity. But Hartsworth gets his the ball before Duma. Here comes Kemper. Kemper loses the ball. Hartsworth everywhere right now. Kemper's there, though. Kemper turns it around. Ball's played into the box, but Ben Temple has that one. Temple laser focus. It looks like Jordan Hartsworth down there, holding his knee. Two hands. Okay. Yeah. 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 Two hands over his golden goal here. But a little bit of a 
applause here for injury to Jonah Hartsford. And that's a big blow. Jonah Hartsford was just making big plays defensively. It looks like there's a substitution waiting to come on, but they will have to wait. Ball's right to Hartsford, right where he wants it. Ball tries to get his head to it, unsuccessful. here would be sudden death prior to my previous belief and that is a kick to the arm good thing he doesn't need to use it free kick here been hood on will always take those free kicks and he's so good at setting up chances in these opportunities see what he can do here heritage's defense ever since Otten was able to come back on Following his injury, it's been tremendous. Arsfor has the ball. He can do anything with the ball. He's going to play it up. Boss making a run. Boss is in space. Boss. Boss loses the ball once again. Boss is in a tremendous spot. And it was a great play for Noah Arsfor to find Boss in open space. But Boss has struggled today with his ability to get behind the ball and really send a shot on that. I'm not sure he's had a shot on target all day. He's been on the receiving end of many chances. And Noah Harsavort subbing off. Maybe waiting for the second half, taking a quick water break. And John Lansing also will take a breather. Noah Wildeboer and Lucas Wildeboer, the brotherly duo, taking the field here. Lucas Wildeboer looks hungry for a goal. The ball is put in. Simkey. Once again, puts that chance to sleep. Connect. Connect on the ball. Wildeboer. And his own player knocked him over on that. Rolls it right to the keeper. Maybe he should score then. And a beautiful opportunity set up by Ryan De Silva squandered. <laughs> I've said some stuff like that. I don't think it was well received. <laughs> then Hoy Donk will take the kick here. When Hoy Donk puts it in, easy for Ben Temple. Temple gets behind it, sticks to his hands, no problem. And Temple's going to play it deep. Balls for Boss. They're trying to leave it for their keeper, but Lucas Wildeboer pursuing that ball so they can't. De Silva plays it up the side. De Silva crosses it in right to Simke. And Simke's ready for those balls now. Seems to be the strategy from Guido. Head up the right side of the field and cross it in. But Simke's ready. Ben Hoydonk loses boss. Ben Hoydonk is weaving through the Guido defense here. Seemingly effortlessly. Going up the side, connect. Beautiful. A little bit of a scramble there. Connect breaks the playoff, however. Kemper up the side. Number eight, Dykema. Dykema on Reed Vanderwood. Reed Vanderwood easily pulls it out to the side. He's still in bounds. He's able to play to connect. Great play by Vanderwood. Boss pursuing, number 19 on the ball. Snyder plays it up. It's going to be an offside whistle. That's Dykstra. Who does Dykstra? Unable to stay on side. Knocked to the ground. Take the to recover. 
Period one, there's still a whole other period after that. They've got two periods of extra time, like Mr. Dewey said. But it's also golden goal. So one goal could end it. And it looks like Bork slips a little bit. Looks at his toes after that one. Literally not happy with what he done there. It's a key will go for goal kick. Both teams look deflated. And that If there's a second period for the shootout. Oh, if someone would sponsor me, I would. That's why I sponsored Burger King. Whopper, 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 whopper. They turn your mic off because they hear everything. They hear everything. And it really, truly has been a deadlock of a match so far. One that can only end in heartbreak for one of the sides. We have a small interested message here from Tyson. This program is brought to you by Taking the Leap Forward campaign. Please make your donations to takingtheleapforward.com to help us land in the leap in September 2023. For real. <laughs> Thank you. Donations for Guido's new school building, Taking the Leap Forward. That's yay. Please be generous. I don't actually know what the website is. Okay, that may not be the right website. Uh, I think that it may, is it on our school website? Please donate for us hosting Salsa. This will be the last time we'll be able to host soccer Salsa on this field. It's actually, the, could be the last soccer match a Guido soccer team ever plays on on this field if Guido secures the win here. We're going to miss this field. And the correction is uh, leapingforward.ca for the website for donations for the new Guido building. Always appreciate donations. <laughs> Bro, just plug the donations and dip. Crazy. So if the Griffins do secure the win this game, this will be the last game played by the Guido Griffins on this field. And there will be a challenge match played here tomorrow regardless, whether the Griffins are in it or not. But these next few minutes will determine whether the Griffins or the Hawks will be the HGCH Knights or, or the Brabook Lynx, sorry, opponent in the next round. If the Griffins lose, they will take on the Knights tomorrow at 9. If the Hawks lose, they will take on the Lynx tomorrow at 9 a.m. Both matchups have happened in league play. The Griffins and the Knights seeming to be pretty even as they had a 0-0 draw. And I cannot list what has happened between the Hawks and the Lynx, although I know they have played. The ball is being brought to center field as we kick off this second period of extra time. And it looks like the Griffins will kick off here. And we'll see if anyone can find the back of the net or if we are destined for a penalty shootout. This has been quite the battle. And it is sudden death, to the best of my knowledge. meaning next goal wins if somebody finds the back of the net it doesn't even have to be pretty if it rolls in that is a salsa championship goal played back by Harsevort Bork has the ball Bork to Vanderwood Vanderwood calming in control here. Plays it up the middle to De Silva. De Silva looks to take it up the wing. He's going to play it to connect, but it's picked off. Otten's on that ball, and he clears it deep. Nobody's in pursuit. Vanderwood will control. Vanderwood has the ball in the corner, forcing the Hawks to come to him. Ball is played beside Dykstra. Ball is taken by Otten. Duma with the ball. Knocked off the ball by De Silva. And De Silva has been so great in the midfield today, forcing so many interceptions. Ball is put in. 
It looks like it's going to be cleared by Bork. Hello. It actually stayed in play fairly briefly. Connect tried to save it, but to no avail. Ball thrown in by Ong. Captain, Ong has it. Only whiffs on it. Lodobor is able to recover it. De Silva up. Boss is chasing. Harsevort's on it. Harsevort's there. Harsevort has the ball. It's a one with the keeper. Oh, recovery from number 20. No strike. Harsevort fighting for it. Well, it's a penalty call. And he's holding his head. And they're in the box now. Ball across in. No luck. And the game is still going. Harsevort holding his head. Not stopping the game. The game for concussion protocol here. And DJ Boss with a push after the whistle. Looks like no hard sports. You can only hope that hard support's okay. Such a key part of this keto offense. Only goal scorer in this game and scored half the goals in the last game. And Cameron Bork limping, favoring his leg as Ryan Law for coming for a substitution. And that that is something that happens in these long games. Injuries just become more and more frequent. It's hot, players are starting to lose control of their bodies a little bit. And Temple will easily grab that ball. And Temple's so good at reading those opportunities. He knows when to go. And he doesn't hesitate. Boss plays it into hard support. Hard support with an opportunity here. Hard support to put the game away! Oh, and it's punched out by the keeper, Simki. A tremendous play by Simki to keep his team's championship hopes alive. And Harsevort was so close to putting his game on ice. But the Griffins are coming up with chance after chance after chance. And the Hawks are scrambling. They want to force a penalty shootout here, quite frankly. And the heritage coach pleading for some energy from his players as that ball is punched out by the keeper. And they have an opportunity here. And it appears like it's that ball is going to be taken by Kim. No problem at all. Here we go. Judah Dykstra. He makes up some significant ground there. Kemper. Kemper throws it down into the corner. Judah Dykstra tries to get a foot on it, but he can't. Oh, there was it in. The ball is in the middle here. Oh, and that shot was nowhere near the keeper. Oh. And it looks like Jesse Duma gave Ben Temple a little bit of a push there after the ball was secured. DJ Boss, he's in on that. DJ Boss with an opportunity and he doesn't shoot. Great defense there from the heritage side. He had taken the shot a split second sooner, though. He may have had an opportunity. Looks like he's trying to take the corner very quick here. Pass to Willibor. Oh, but Willibor fakes it past the boss, and he crosses it in. Not enough blue shirts in the box. Ryan Loft, he's going to have a crack at it. That one's stopped. Not as much power as he would have told. And that ball's going to be cleared. Harrison tries to get a foot on it, and, almost does, and he does, actually. Which does impact the play. Wildeboer into the middle to Wildeboer. Wildeboer, Connect will take it. Connect, crossing the ball in. The ball is into DJ Boss. Oh, that one did not find Boss. As Duma, oh, and Duma was not expecting a mistake from Blocker there. If he was, he could have had a one-on-one -on -one breakaway. Vanderwood plays it in deep. Too many white shirts. It's a sea of white in the defensive end. But here comes Harsevort, making a final push here. Oh, and that one's going to be Guido Ball. Tremendous play by Hurstfort, who looks utterly exhausted. And he's calling for a substitution. But they really need Hurstfort in this spot. And it looks like his request for a sub will not be honored as the manager. The gaffer says, I have other plans. Hugh Jans will sub in. Reed Vanderwood easily controls it. He's going to wait for the pressure to get to him. He's going to take his time. That's what makes Reed the captain's team's full confidence. Here comes Ryan Locke. He's on the sideline. 
and he manages to clear it outside. The ball is caught by Mr. Wildeborn, Coach Wildeborn. Ball thrown deep. Ben Hoydong. Up the side. And it looks like we are still deadlocked. We have not seen a goal since the first half. And the Guido fan support. They're getting riled up. They want to see a goal. And don't we all? Something to find the back netting. Or we will see penalty kick. But Hoynog stops that one, but it is out off of Julian. The substitution is going to come in for Jackson Connect. I can't quite see who it is from here. But it looks like it's going to be number five, Thomas Jansima. Coming in in a very key spot in this game. Ball to Jonah Hartsport. Or Jack Vanderwood, forgive me. Stratting slips, but he's able to control it. Ryan Law plays the ball up. Will the board trying to control it, but he can't. Ball is played up the wing. And it's played right back. And in a dangerous spot here is Heritage. Oh, and he's knocked off the ball. He doesn't make an attempt to get back. And it's turnover after turnover for both sides. Ball's played up. Stratting is... Slide tackle for Stratton. Oh, and the ball is here. Oh, it's saved. Benjamin Temple. No, and it's a goal. And the referee. A terrible call by the referee. The referee says the ball was fully past the goal line. And the ball was almost certainly not past the goal line. <laughs> That's a joke. There is no way that ball was past the goal line. That ball was over top of the goal line and not past. That is a ridiculous call late in this game. That's a joke. The whole ball was not cross the line. And what a controversial call to end this matchup. Wow, what an ending to what was a terrific day for Guido Soccer. And it's heartbreak on Green Rock Drive. As the Griffins will have to play in a challenge match tomorrow morning. Due to that call, that's going to be a thrust. The Heritage Hawks are your Sauce Single A Boy Soccer champions. And an appeal here, even a BIR appeal. But we're going to call it quits. That's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Knights, Griffins. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. How do I unplug this?